amazing.
up strong Face the truth about themselves To understand what been wrong I know we can find a way I know we can find a way I know we can find a way To stand up Stand up Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We are also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Doing some adjustments here. You know, black. Just walking into the show. What the? Uh, I had an amazing women's forum last night, so a little adjustments made right now. Amazing women's forum last night, by the way. It was really, really, really. Mama Mia. Hola, Cece. Gracias. Really amazing. Welcome to the show. You can get involved by calling 888. 888- Seven seven five three seven seven three eight 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 seven seven Jesse J E S S E Jesse. My biblical question, brand new one for this week. It's a doozy, right? A lot of people responded to it. What is your nature? What is your Nature. Some people were telling me uh, this question really made me ponder myself. And some people said, I really didn't know what it, I didn't know. I didn't know what that question meant. And so they're really looking at it. They are really, really looking at it. We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on com slash show. JesseLeePeterson.com slash show. All right? Um, and if you're out and about traveling, it's summertime. It's white history month. It's traveling time. July just feels white time. So some of you are on the road, and you just can't listen, or you're working out, or whatever. You can listen to the show on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line on Talk Stream Live at 641-793-1500. 641-793-1500. And don't forget to follow us. Follow us on Cozy.tv slash JLP. Cozy. Where Christ is King. Dot TV slash JLP and Rumble. You got to know how to rumble. Dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Rumble. Hey, y'all over there on Rumble. Rumble. Dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Hit the like button. Ring the bell. Um, subscribe. Y'all know what to do. Isn't that right? And there is one line open if you want to jump in there at 888-7753-773-888-77 Jesse. All right. So listen, it is Friday. So first let me tell you, we had an amazing women forum last night. And that's why I don't mind sitting going to bed late being up late to get that done because the women, there are truly women out there that want what's right. And even when they get their little feelings hurt, they don't give up because they realize they're not their feelings. But women that don't know that, they go on to run. 
And you just can't help them anyway, so they have to just suffer and die. Nothing you can do. But amazing meeting last night with ladies every third Thursday night. So today is Friday, of course. And every Friday is get it off your chest day. Every Friday is whatever is on your mind, express your Self Friday. You Tom like a mug. You need to go to go to go to go and get yourself bleached because everything you say about black people and you're sitting up there looking like a tar baby. Uh, it might sound like a semantics argument, but he's a great alien. I wonder if he's been smoking pot. This is our biggest challenge yet. You ready, Miles? Oh yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, gang, gang. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> yeah, challenging. In, indeed challenging. So what are we up against? Congratulations, Honey Bun. We are so proud of you and your accomplishments. <laughs> you. We need you to be kind and respectful. No. Stop her! Somebody stop there, there really has been enough Biden bashing, and the laptop <laughs> is old. We're not going to make it, are we? <laughs> Mom... I I, I love you. you. Wait, I was, wait, uh, wait, wait, okay. wait, 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 okay. wait, wait. Man up now, man up, nigga. <laughs> I, I knew this was a bad idea. Seek... <laughs> what a mess. What a mess, huh? That's what just happens when the men are weak and they allow the women to run things. All hell break loose. No heaven. Nothing but hell. So what I want to do is, uh, it is why History Month is the end of the week, the work week for a whole lot of folks. Not for all, not for all. And Nick is getting the phone right there, one of those guys are. Um, so I want to pl- uh, pay a tribute to one white man's Amazing life. And amazing life. And Sean, my producer's here to help present this, to pay tribute to one white man's amazing life. After all, America was founded and created, discovered by white men, and with the help of God, they created the greatest country on this side of heaven. Thank God, because if they had not, where would y'all be? In the hood, somewhere. (laughs) So, Sean is here, my producer. And uh, this story from Wikipedia. Uh, Louis. 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 Zamperini. Zamperini, he was an Olympic distant runner, and an American World War II veteran. He was born on January 26, 1917 in... Olean. Olean? New York, yeah. I never heard of that. Olean. Must be a white suburb. Yeah. (laughs) Olean. O-L-E-A-N. New York. Watch this from CBN. Louis Zamperini was born in 1917. Soon after, his family moved from New York to the West Coast, and Torrance, California inherited quite a character. And uh, the the only reason I got to the first grade is because I cheated. (laughs) (laughs) A smoker by age five, Louis was a tough young man. Two or three months and I started retaliating, and I found out I could whip these guys. And so I was always fighting, getting even, my brother and the, and the chief of police and the principal got together and said, what are we going to do with this kid? Thinking he could use his speed for something besides stealing, they talked him into track. A slow start, but in 1934, Louis broke the world's interscholastic mile record. His time of 4 minutes 21 seconds stood for two decades. And then I got the shock of my life. I got a call from the Olympic Committee that I had qualified for the Olympic tryouts. The Torrance Tornado finished the 5,000-meter Olympic trials in a dead heat and qualified for a place on the American Olympic team. 
Louis was off to Berlin, the capital of Nazi Germany. In the 5,000 meter Olympic final, Louis finished eighth, but ran the last quarter mile in just 56 seconds. So fast that Adolf Hitler himself insisted on meeting him. He hoped for another shot at Olympic gold in 1940, but the games were canceled due to the war. Louis joined the military. Amazing. So that's just the first part of his, of his life, you know. Did he finish high school? He did finish, right? Yeah. Even though he cheated, he said. Yeah, that was early. That was in the first, second grade. He said he cheated uh, just, just, <laughs> just to get through, and he got in fights. And That reminded me of when I was growing up. A lot of guys did not like school. Yeah. You know, they went because they had to go, and they did what they needed to do to just get through it. Yeah, and they still, they still do. Yeah. Because it's so boring. Yeah, it's so it's just not, not natural. Amazing, and so. So this is just this is one of those life stories that seems almost un- unbelievable when you when you hear the entire thing. Yeah, like everything that he that he's been through. This is just the first part of his story, but so far he's already been to the Olympics. Actually, my grandpa was in the was in the same uh, Olympics that he was in 1936 in Berlin. Really? Yeah, Jesse Owens was the was the runner. Right yeah. on. Your grandfather was there? Yeah. He was participating in the game? Yeah. He came in sixth in the uh, canoe, kayak. Uh, wow. Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. Yep. So your grandpa was involved in the Nazi Olympics? Well, uh, Hitler, was, <laughs> Hitler was there, and it took place in Berlin in 1936. So it was, you know, under you know, Nazi Germany. This was before... Wow. Yeah. Amazing. And, and then, and it is. And did he get a chance to meet Jesse Owens? Not that I know of. Oh. Uh, Not that I know of. But so far, in his, you know, Louis Zamperini, so far in his life, he's already been to the Olympics and he's already met Hitler. And that's, <laughs> that's just the first part of his, of his, of his life. And you know? to be clear, Jesse Owens wasn't your grandfather. They no. were both there in the Nazi running stuff. Okay. Right, right. Nice. Just so people don't think, oh, his granddaddy was Jesse Owen. Why is he so white? N- no. He white. And so the second story from defense government. Yep. It says that he was stationed in the Pacific as a bombardier. Bombardier. Oh my dear. <laughs> bombardier on May twenty seventh, nineteen forty three. His aircraft experienced mechanical problems during a mission and ditch into the ocean. See, this is from CBN. Over the next two years, he earned the nickname Lucky Louie for cheating death as a bombardier. So the search and rescue mission on May 27th of 43 should have been routine. And we were reluctant to take it, but uh, they said, well, it passed inspection and it should be all right. 800 feet above the sea, the mission turned deadly. The Green Hornet's two left engines cut out, and the plane and its crew crashed into the ocean 800 miles south of Hawaii. Out of 11 men aboard the plane, three of us survived. Then I saw a life raft drifting away from the wreckage area, which was vital for our survival. They were now floating in the middle of 65 million square miles of water. The next wow. day, they spotted a rescue plane. It's, it's weird, from the sky, uh, a thousand feet up, a raft looks like a white cap, you know, and uh, they didn't see us. When you're on a life raft at sea, it's much worse than being in a foxhole. And they say there's no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole where you can multiply that a few times on a raft. That's all you do on a raft. I don't care if you're an atheist or what you are. When you reach the end of your rope and you got nowhere else to turn, your atheism isn't going to help you. You're going to turn and look up. While Louis drifted across the Pacific, in the U.S., President Roosevelt signed a death certificate for First Lieutenant Louis Samperini. According to the file, Louis was dead. For two more weeks, Louis and pilot Russell Phillips drifted. Suddenly, they saw land, but their raft was spotted by the Japanese. They had spent 47 days in the South Pacific, drifting nearly 2,000 miles to the Marshall Islands before being rescued by the enemy. Wow, they don't make them like that anymore. <sighs> yeah, the, the stuff they experienced on the raft, 47 days they were just stuck on a raft floating in the sea. They used um, 
Well, first of all, they thought they were getting rescued by a plane at, at, at some point, and it ended up being a Japanese plane that was uh, shooting at them. So it shot holes in their raft. It almost killed them. They had to duck under the, the, the water to avoid the, the bullets. And then they were eating, they were using albatross, you know, the birds. They were using, they were catching those, right. and they were chopping them up and using them as bait to catch small sharks. And they would cut up the small sharks and eat the like the liver of the sharks to, wow. to survive. Yeah. And then they started eating the uh, the birds themselves, just to get just to have something to eat to uh, get through the day. Our military is not like that anymore. No. They have like women and drag queens and every. How are they going to last out there on a raft? Right. And another thing they don't talk about with the military nowadays is they have, you know, deployments. So you go you go on a. a a 12 month deployment or 18 month deployment back then. And in earlier wars before that, they said, you're going to war. See you in three years. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it was just, you're gone. You're coming back when the war is over. I want my country back. And this next sound bite is about what? Defense.gov. Right. Uh, so he ended up landing on a, on a, a at a POW camp at a, Japanese POW camp. Really? That's what Marshall Island is about? Right. That's amazing. So according to Defense.gov, Zamperini and Philip landed at the Marshall Islands where they were taken prisoners by Japanese sailors. Zamperini was transferred to the infamous POW camp in North Japan Infamous because of prison god. Oh, um, Musko Matsuhiro <laughs> Matsuhiro Watanabe. He was also known as the Bird. They called him the Bird. And and the reason they called him that because he he relished torturing the men. Right. What the? Uh, so I like Mama. This is from CBN. We were taken to the island of Wuji and weighed in at thirty kilo, which is about sixty five pounds. We still couldn't walk. We had to crawl. Within 48 hours, they were transferred to Kwajalein, Execution Island. Guards delighted in telling Louis about the previous U.S. Marines who visited the island. He said, well, they've all been executed by decapitation, Sumerai style. So they can't wait to line up in front of your cell, 75, 80 men lined up like going to a movie premiere and every one of them is either swearing at you, uh, throwing rocks at you, jabbing you with sticks, spitting on you. You know, and here you are, 65 pounds. You got constant diarrhea. You're starved. They throw a rice ball. They don't give it to you. And it falls on the floor. You have to spend hours picking up every grain of rice mixed in with the dirt. And on three occasions, Louis was injected, used as a guinea pig for experiments. After 43 days of captivity, he and Phillips were sent to a POW camp in Japan. Then Louis was quickly sent to Amari. It was here where he met Matsuhiro Watanabe, a.k.a. the bird. The bird was so relentless in his torture of the captives, Louis chose not to speak with us about it. Wow. Yeah. He wasn't, wasn't treated very uh, nicely. Beaten, starved inject you know had experiments uh done on him uh, and he was um you know he was picked out by that guy the bird All right particularly he was picked out you know as a as a target wow for, for just beatings constant beatings and torture and and why did he, did he say why he was i think i think because of his just natural leadership you yeah. know he was there amongst other american pow uh POWs, but he was just a sort of a natural leader amongst them. So of course, that's the guy you're going to pick out to right. to try to take Amazing, down take man. down a notch. Um, yeah. So I mean, this this whole his whole life story was a book at one point. I think it was called Unbroken. It became a movie, and um, and yeah, there's more. Remind me of the Great White Hope. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump. What the? Um, and so. A little bit more about him uh, from Wikipedia. Zemperini uh, uh, related that after the war, he had nightmares about um, 
strangling his former captor and began drinking heavily, trying to forget his experiences. He attended one of the evangelicals crusade. Eva- yeah, evangelist. E- evangelist crusade led by Billy Graham. He did in Los Angeles, California. May his soul rest in peace. Billy Graham in Los Angeles, California, and, be- and he became a born-again Christian. Watch this from CBN. War is over. Peace has come. Americans celebrate as Americans have never celebrated before. Now I got married. I have a little girl, and I'm still suffering nightmares. Waking up uh, screaming. Doing some drinking, too. Oh, that's all I did. I drank. Uh, I just figured the more I drank, the, the, the better I'd sleep at night. So I was out every night drunk. So he reluctantly agreed to attend the next Billy Graham meeting. He talks about one person only, the person of Jesus Christ, for 30 minutes. And, uh, you know, he read the scriptures, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and the wages of the sin is death. Well, if anybody had ever asked me if I believed that Christ was the Son of God, I would have said, yes, all my life I believed it. But the heart, no, I never, I knew somehow if I believed it in my heart, my life would have been different. So I knew I didn't possess the Savior. As the Bible says, it meant prefer darkness rather than light. And here I was preferring my rotten life to, to, to the light. And then I started having a flashback to the life raft and prison camp. And I kept thinking, I came back from the war alive and I never even thought about those prayers. Never even tried to keep one prayer. Somehow I knew I was still getting drunk. I knew it. I also knew that I forgave all of my guards, including the bird. I knew it. Louis traveled back to Japan to forgive the prison guards that tortured him. He couldn't meet with the bird, but spoke with many of the former guards. I believe it with all my heart that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord, for those who are called according to his purpose. But I think our eternal life starts now by faith in Jesus Christ. And so that is the strength we live by, and death no longer has a sting, not to the Christian. Wow, that's deep. Eternal life is now. Yeah, he went back to Japan and he forgave all of those Jap- Japanese uh, prison guards. I try to tell people forgiveness is the way. That's deep, man. Amazing life story. It is. You know the at the Olympics when they hold the torch? Right. He he did that sometime in the in the nineties before he died. Wow, what an amazing life. Insane. I mean, insane. Most men would never be able to handle that nowadays. Right. They can't they're like emotional. Right. And and sensitive. Like a little girl. Yeah, and to be in such, you know, good good spirits about yeah. about it all. You know? That's deep. Um Yeah, he went he went to a you know, Billy Graham, <laughs> I think they called them crusades. Right. And yeah, they were evangelist cru- crusades. They were the type where he would call people down to accept Jesus, you know. Right. But apparently he got the real deal but from it. Yeah, he got, the me- he got the message. Yeah. And he stopped drinking. He stopped having nightmares. And, uh, and he forgave. And he went, he went and met with all those guards and forgave them one by one. And he understood that salvation was of the heart. Right. It's about the heart. Yep. And he couldn't find the bird, the bird, that guy. Right. He couldn't find him. I'm, as far as I know, I'm pretty sure he committed uh, suicide, the, the bird. The bird did? Oh, you read that? Yeah, I'm 90% sure that's what happened. Really? What the? So he didn't end up meeting with him, but he met with all the other. So the bird is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and so according to defense.gov, Zamper. Zamparini. Zamparini died in 2014 in Los Angeles, California at 97 years old. Right. Wow. Right. Long life. Long life. That's amazing. He just died in 2014. Right. Those are the kind of people I like talking to. You learn from them. Yeah. You really learn from them. Real stuff, not, not just how to do TikTok stuff. Oh, the TikTok stuff going on nowadays is <laughs> painful. Just think about uh, America was strong in that way when the white men were in charge. And now you, the primary complaint uh, complaint now is, is racism. Right. You look at that guy's Isn't whole... Yeah, some people would look at that guy's whole life 
and go, oh, he's he's a race, you know, he's a racist. Right. <laughs> the people complain about imaginary racism. This guy going through hell. Yeah, and all of them were like, I mean, World War yeah. II, all of those soldiers were like that. We're talking, you know, these guys weren't white supremacists going into war to defend, you know, right. defend our nation. I know. All the way up to my when I my grandfather inspired, he had that kind of attitude about life. Yeah. What an amazing story. Where may Zamperini so rest in peace. And he died in twenty fourteen in Los Angeles, California at ninety seven. July just feels white. Right. Happy White History Month. Yeah, there's a whole book. There's a whole very, very good book about him. So I would recommend that as well. Amazing. And, and the name of the book? Unbroken. Unbroken. They don't make them like that anymore, man. Amazing book, yeah. I think Donald Trump is the last one. Yep. Thank you, Sean. Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> My history moment. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Happy White History Month. Amazing. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. July is White History Month for those who don't know. And uh, you can... Uh, this is our sixth year of celebrating White History Month because you need to remember these things. You need to know them and remember them because the enemies of God, the enemies of America, and the enemies of white men are trying desperately, desperately to destroy it. They want to get rid of it and put up junk that has no meaning, all evil. 888-7753-773. Russ, out of Virginia. Happy White History Month, Russ. Yeah, no, we're not going there. Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, yes, we're not going there, Jesse. Listen. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you just you said. Right now. Russ? I said we're not going there. I'm oh. not going to jump around with you right now because I'm not in a really good state right now. Oh, I have a broken back. You're so not going to wish really us happy play. White History Month? That's a bunch of crap, and I'm not going to even go And how is that crap? Because it's crap. That's Jesse Lee Peterson made up to crap, and if, that means nothing to if, me at if, all. If it wasn't for white people, would you be in America? Yes, how I would. How would you? How would, would you, you? How would you be here when that would not have been an American uh, if it wasn't for white people? Because how would you be here? that's a lie. That's a that's a lie. That's that's a Lee Peterson belief, and that means nothing and, and except what, to Jesse Lee Peterson and what and what, the idiots that believe you. And what is a lie? What you're saying is a lie. And what is that? What you just said. What when is, you opened your mouth and you said something, what you said that came out your lie out your mouth was a lie. What part of what so I said? So you don't have to ask me. What part you of said it. At what part of what I said? I said if there wasn't white people who built America, found it, you wouldn't be here because there would be no America. What part of America? Uh, what part of that is a lie? What you just said. What of that do you not understand, Jesse? Can that, you not? I, understand? Yeah, I do what not understand. What you said was a lie. And, and how is that a lie? I, I'm asking because, because maybe I'm true. missing something here. What part of that is not true? None of it is true, Jesse. So white people didn't found, discovered America and created the greatest country? No. Who did? You know, if you Who did find it? a... If you Who did find it, Russ? A, can, can I, will you allow me to answer the question? You're asking me a question, can I answer? Hold on, hold on. Let me take a quick break. Back in a moment. Russ trying to fuss. <laughs> I have books that are amazing. Highly recommend you get them. Seven Guaranteed Stuff to Spiritual, Family, and Financial Success Guide. Even if you're not starting a business, but you have a job. 
on your welfare. It can help you if you do. Be doers of the word, all right? From rage to responsibility. From rage. That's what I write about in the first chapter, especially how I overcame. Scam. How the black leadership exploits black Americans. They are using them. And blacks are too willing to be used. And then my last book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. They are all amazing books, and they are helpful. Go to rebuildingtheman.com if you want an autographed copy, or call 800-411-2663. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. Happy White Houston Month, right? Uh, You got to remember the truth about this great country. They are deceiving you, folks, because they want to destroy America and replace it with junk. So a couple announcements before I go back to the phones. The Hake Report is coming up at 9 a.m. this morning from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific Time. The Hake Report, H-A-K-E Report, dot com. And then at 12 noon, 12 noon Pacific Time, a brand new episode of the TV. Amazing, amazing episode. I uh, had an interesting conversation with Kaylee Triller Harms. She is a, a women's advocate, advocate, a contributor to the Federalist, and co-founder of the Hands Across the Aisle Women's Coalition. Um, watch this. Next time on The Fallen State. The only way that a woman can have a clear mind is by returning to her father. Do you actually believe what you're saying right now? I know it to be true. I hope you don't have a wife. This is the most misogynistic interview I've ever had. Why do you marry a man that can't take care of you? Don't insult my husband or we're going to be done talking. I would rather have a hole in my floor than a man who treats me the way that you treat women. Have you ever experienced toxic masculinity? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> when? Today. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So that's today at 12 noon Pacific time. You're going to love it. It was very interesting. And you can support. Remember, you can support the Father State by becoming a member on the uh, YouTube channel there. And thank you all for that. And uh, at 4 p.m. today, it's Friday. At 4 p.m., the American Anchor Baby Show. The American Anchor Baby. And he's taking you on a ride. A ride. And he will not hold you up in um, Las Vegas with no heat, on the plane, ready to take off. All right? He's going to take off on time. There will be plenty of air conditioning on the plane. And you'll be fine. You will enjoy the American Anchor Baby. You see that opening that he put together for Ma- uh, for Open Line Friday? It's, it's deep and funny. So the American Anchor Baby at 4 p.m. today, Pacific time, all right? 
And um, on Sunday, I won't be doing this this Sunday fellowship. Joel Friday, he black. Joel Friday dot TV will be doing the uh, fellowship. He'll be standing in for me this Sunday at eleven a.m. Pacific time. Doors open at ten thirty. So go to rebuildingaman.com slash church. This is Sunday, eleven a.m. Pacific time, two p.m. Eastern time. You can watch it live. So Joel Friday TV. No dot, just do a Friday TV. All right? That's his YouTube channel. He's here every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So a lot going on. A lot. And yet not a lot. Let me go quickly back to Russ. Hey, Russ. Yes, sir. And so if white people, white men had not found it and created the greatest country on this side of heaven, there would be no America. Where would you be if they had can not I done this? Something? Okay, can, I, can I say something real quick first? Yes. yes. Okay. My first and most important thing is to always be respectful. And I hope that I have always been respectful to you whomever I've ever spoke to. And I always want to make sure that I do that. But I do want to say that there are issues in my life that may hinder that, if I would say. So, for example, you know, because I've talked to you and you're, uh, the people that, that you put on the line, I have issues with but I'm a very violent person. Now, I don't bring that to other people. It's if they bring it to me, then I give it right back to them. Amazing. That plus, I deal with a whole lot of health issues. So, for example, I think I said to you earlier. So, so what does that have right to do now, with white history? Well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Hold tell on. me because of time. No, no. What does that have to do with all of yeah, your little I, issues? I, I, I need to, I what need does to that have to do first. with white history? No, I want to hear that. Okay. Uh, you just told me about you got a bunch of issues. But what does that yes, have I to do. do with white history? Okay. I told you what I thought about white history. That was a bunch of crap. And why that are you so ungrateful to white people for making it possible for you, a black person, to be in the greatest country on this side of heaven. Why are you so ungrateful for that? Because, number one, it's not the greatest. It's not the greatest. What is the, what one. is the, what, what country, which country is the greatest if it's not America? It's not, it does not have to be America, just because you say it. I'm asking. You say I'm whatever asking. You want to say. Which country is the greatest if it's not America? I have I have not researched it, but so then, I how do you know it's not the greatest? Then I did. I I said that what you said is not necessarily true. That's what I. Said. But you have no proof that it's not true, and I have no proof that it. What you said is is true. So then you don't, when you say it's not true, you're just messing around? You don't mean it? You're just playing? No, no. What I'm saying is what you're saying is not necessarily true. But it is and true. It is 1% true. Didn't you see that opening this morning? What the? Say what? Didn't you see that opening this morning about um, uh, Louis Zamperini? That is America. No, I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you said. I didn't hear what you said. Did you see the opening in at the top of this hour about Louis Zamperini, the man that was, went to war? He was an Olympia, and he was an amazing. He was a white man who helped create one of the greatest countries ever. I know. 
that the country I live in had a black man that was eating ice cream in his living room, and a cop walked into his house and shot him dead. That's, That's why you're I not know. supposed to eat ice cream in the living room. You're supposed to eat it in the kitchen. You sound like a darn fool. <laughs> Thank you, Russ. I got to run. 888-7753-773. Let me go to James. A fir- I, I, that's enough of Russ. Uh, a first-time call out of Boston. James, happy White History Month, and welcome to the show. Happy White History Month, Jesse. Thank you. Amazing. Amazing. Hey, uh, I just uh, wanted to say, Jesse, that um, uh, I think it was a godsend um, that uh, I came across your videos um, on YouTube, and I've been listening to you ever since, probably about not even two weeks now. (laughs) And, uh, excuse me, and... um, uh, you know, I think you nail it right on the head um, about anger. Yeah. And uh, I think that's very, very powerful. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, I just want to say thank you, um, you know, because I, I feel like it's helping me in my life. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with the, um, an angry spouse. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do all I can, but, you know, as they say, uh, you can only lead the horse to water. Yeah. You can't make them drink it. That's right. And how so, are you dealing with her? In what way are you dealing with her? Um, well, we we have a baby together. Um, she's uh, She just turned nine months. And uh, so it's, uh, it's a kind of a tricky situation, honestly. Um, she she had a very very bad upbringing, um, and uh, you know <laughs> it's um, it's a, it's a tough one. Uh, I try to I try to you know I try to spread love to her. You know, are you married to her? No, we were uh, we were engaged, but um, didn't you know? It doesn't seem like it's going to work out. Um, you know. Are you living with her at this point? Um. Well, see, my my situation. She has a son with somebody, another man. What? Uh, seven years old. Yeah. How old is he? He the boy is seven. Um. And uh, see, my problem is, um, I just can't allow um someone to live in the same house as my baby. You know, so I I'm doing this for my baby first, first and foremost. You know, because um, I want the best for my baby. So, um, yeah, it's a tricky one, Jesse. Um, and what's tricky about it? So you're not living with her. You're not married to her, right? Uh, well, I stay with the baby. I stay with her, um, you know, every day that I can. I just, um, you know, it, it turned kind of ugly, and uh, I, I can't be around her son. So when her son is there, I go stay somewhere else. So you go live with her? Well, uh, yeah, I stay with her and the baby. Um, and why do you do that? Day. Why don't you make him bring the baby to you? Uh, um, you know, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I'm working on it. And and how- good. It's, it's courts involved and stuff, and uh, I'm... Um, Deal with lawyers and stuff. So, what kind of, are you trying? Are you trying to get visitation or something like that? Um. Yeah, you see, I live in Massachusetts, where you know they, it's, a, it's not very fair sometimes. It's like um, that all over the country for men. Yeah. Um. So, you know, the woman can say anything they want, and then they just, you know, it's, like, it's almost like they just go with it. But yeah. Uh, yeah. And so. so you tried are you trying to get visitation rights yeah i want it i want it at this point it's like i you know i'm kind of being forced to um the last place i want to be is court believe me right but you know it's almost like i'm she you know she took that step so now i have to um 
I'm, I'm being forced to do it so so I can have it on paper, you know, that I can have my time. Because right now, if the ball's in her court, like, she can, you know, they could give it the rights all to the woman with the kid, so. Is she older than you? No. Uh, I'm 37, she's 29. So you, so if, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, you're in court trying to get visitation right with this woman who already have a nine-year-old baby by someone else, right? Yeah, he's seven. And then she's uh, seven years old. And she trying to prevent you from seeing your child? No. Nope. Why are you in court then? No. Nope. Um, uh, there was a, there was an incident with the, um, her ex and <laughs> it got, uh, it got kind of ugly, like nothing physical, but you know. Oh, it, between you and him? Yeah, he was, he was, he was stepping over the line, you know, it's a bit, it's a, it was a jealousy thing. He was jealous that I was living with his son, you know, trying to help, you know, all I do, ever did was try to help the son, but, you know, he's at the age where he's, uh, he needs, he needs, like, in my, where I was raised, you know, um, like, tough love, in a sense, like, you know, no slamming the doors, no stomping your feet, no talking back to your mother, type of stuff. No talking but, back to your mother? Yeah, you know, oh. he's just no dis- not not being disrespectful. <clears throat> but his, oh, so you tell him you get on him when he is disrespectful to his mother? Yes. And you tell him not to slam the door? Yeah, you know, just... Um, and, and so his father got mad at you doing that to him? Yep. And, they let him do whatever he wants, you know, they spoil him rotten. And 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 the mother did the mother get mad at you for doing that too? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, she think, I guess she thinks it's okay for him to do whatever he like. You know, she, he he telling her what to do is what right. he's coming down to. And you think that's wrong? Yes, I do. And what gives you the right to be involved in this boy's life? You're not his father at all. What gives you the right to tell him what to do or not to do? Uh, you know, that's something that I, uh, I I think you're right. I guess I guess. No, you know, that was I, a question. I, I, I well, I, the boy needs needs needs. You know, this is <laughs> this is the problem. The boy needs a father in their life, right? But you're not his father. And, uh, I understand. Um, you know, we were all living together, and uh, I just felt obligated to do so. You know what I'm saying? Well, why? That's not your problem. Why would you even live with this woman, knowing she got a baby by someone else, knowing that that guy doesn't want you to, nor does a child? Why are you imposing yourself into that situation? All you're doing is creating problems for yourself. Why are you doing it? <laughs> you're not his father. You shouldn't even be involved in it at all, not one iota. Yeah, you know, um, I'm I'm kind of hard headed. I I gotta learn things the hard way, I guess. And why is that? Sometimes. Um. Uh, I I don't know. Maybe it's my uh, um, what's it called? Uh, maybe what I inherited. You know, my uh, the way my brain works. Um, Do you see the, the the insanity in what you're doing, man? Here you are. You got a baby with a woman who already got a baby with somebody else. You're trying to move into their place and tell this boy what to do, and he have no connection to you at all. You're not his father, and you're imposing yourself on somebody else's child. Yeah. That if he got crazy, up, right? if that boy got up every day and, and whooped his mama, it ain't your business. The right. boy is the kind of woman. The boy is just like his mama. She's getting back when she's put out. Mm-hmm. And there you are involved. You're making the situation worse. Right. But why don't you get away from? Why are you in court? Um, uh, 
it's just, it's where it um just where it ended up um uh you know um how, how you're thirty you say thirty seven you see you creating your own hell on earth yes I do so why don't you are you able to drop this court thing and go and live your life, work on your life? Absolutely. Because this woman that you with, she's just going to give you more hell. It's just going to get mm -hmm. worse. And then it's just going to get worse for you trying to work on somebody else's hell, but not your own. Yeah, you're right. Um, like I said, Jesse, I just... Uh I'm waiting for, um, my, I'm waiting on lawyers to get back to me to, so I can get my custody and then and do exactly that, you know, well, really what it's just coming down to. But you're going to waste and lose more money trying to get custody. Why don't you drop the whole thing, realize you never should have made a baby with this woman, learn from it so you don't repeat it, and let let situation work itself out. All you're about to do now is get ripped off by the lawyers and the courts, and you're still going to lose because you're going to end up paying child support. You're going to end up paying for a stupid so-called representative for the child and then the lawyer for you, and then end up paying her court fee if you don't win, and you're not going to win. Why waste all your life and time and money? Just learn, you know what? I shouldn't have made this baby with this woman. My fault. My back. And then just start working on your life and see what happens because you're about to end up in a real mess. Yeah. Why get a lawyer for that? Who told you to do that? Um, I'm in the union. They actually provide us lawyers, which I don't know how good they really are going to help me here. But Do you have to pay no. for the lawyer? No. So the lawyer is free? Yep. Oh, good. But I still... Is it a male lawyer or female? Female. Oh, God. You're yeah. in trouble because the female is not going to really support you inwardly. She'll say she really, but she's not. She's on the side of the woman. And then if you got a male lawyer, he's going to be too beta to stand up to the woman in the right way. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Because um, I've been emailing her, and, you know, I, that's what I've been getting. That's what I've been thinking myself. Do what you want, of course, the decision is yours, but why don't you drop this whole thing and go live your life? Get out of those people's life, let that woman have that baby, and you work on you and let God's will be done for you. Because you're digging so you, a deep you, hole, James. You suggest that I, I leave my baby, though? Like I, yeah, because I, the baby going to get destroyed anyway, and you're still not going to end up with the baby. That's a, that's a hard one to swallow, Jesse. Can you hold on for me? Yes, sir. Hold on. Let me take a quick break. Two more hours to go. 888-775-3773. 888-77-JESSE. Hake is coming in with the hate news. Not the fake news, but the hate news. Two more hours to go. Back in a moment. We have a counseling service, and I have to admit, thanks to God, it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women, families, and individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy, they're miserable, they have rough lives, they're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand, I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven. It's hot out. Is it El Nino? And it's only getting hotter. 
and everybody wants to go on strike. These communist suckers. And uh, your daily dose of Ukraine propaganda is incoming. No more grain from Ukraine, because they bombed that stuff. What a shame. Going to mess up the whole uh, world food industry or something like that. This is the end of our one of the Jesse Lee Peterson show. It is Get It Off Your Chest Friday, July 21st, 2023 AD. Happy White History Month. Stay tuned for hour two. Jesse Lee will be right back to your calls. But first, fake news, not fake news. Extreme heat. Coming on Sense Network, CNN reports more than 100 million people are under heat alerts across the southern U.S. today as state and federal aid programs attempt to help people cool down. Uh, Abnormally high temperatures from coast to coast are also expected this weekend. Meteorologists say that the heat isn't letting up soon. There have been more than 1,900 record high temperatures in the United States so far this month, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. And uh, NASA which means to deceive in Hebrew. Just kidding, that's fake news. I looked it up, it was fact-checked. NASA scientists also warned that Thursday, warned yesterday, that we haven't even seen the worst of El Nino, and next, which is a tropical thing, I guess. Next year will likely be even warmer for the planet. The uh, increased temperatures will generate about $1 billion in health care costs, they say, every summer as more people get rushed to the emergency room or admitted to the hospital to treat temperature-related conditions, so found a recent study. Lord, right? And lame mainstream movies are out. You can get cool in the movie theaters now that they have air conditioning, right? Hopefully. Gre- Greta Gerwig, whoever that is, her Barbie movie with that pretty gal, Margot Robbie of Harley Quinn, which I never saw, and that pretty boy, I'm blanking on his name, and Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, featuring Scarecrow, Peaky Blinders guy, about an atomic scientist, if you believe in atomic bombs. Both out in U.S. theaters today. That's Friday, right? Movie industry needs a boost, they say. Over 40,000 people bought tickets for, bo- or got tickets, for both today, uh, both movies today, back-to-back, per AMC, America's largest movie and uh, chain, whatever. And uh, lazy, spoiled workers, quote-unquote, threatening not to work. A Broadway strike was averted yesterday, Thursday, after a deal was reached by the union representing 1,500 stagehands and other theater workers. A strike would have shut down shows in New York City and uh, touring shows across the United States today. Meanwhile, 160,000 actors of SAG-AFTRA, as well as 11,000 supposed writers of the Writers Guild of America are already on strike against major film studios and streaming services. In other industries, many other unionized quote-unquote workers threatened to go on strike. About three, over 340,000 union suckers at UPS will go on strike against the package delivery giant on August 1st if there's no deal on a new contract. And looming strikes in the auto industries and hospital, hospitality industries, I mean are also threatening new rounds of walkouts and your daily dose of Ukraine propaganda. A barrage of Russian missile strikes hit grain warehouses across southern Ukraine today, destroying tons of crops. The Ukrainian military said the sustained attacks on the port city of Odessa, not to be confused with Odessa, Texas, are part of Moscow's effort to destroy Ukraine's ability to export food. Ukrainian unchristian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that the attacks this week are part of the largest since the war began and accused Russia of trying to destabilize the globo homo food market. Moscow said that they're retaliating for a strike Monday on the bridge linking occupied Crimea, or Russian Crimea, to Russia. The uh, attacks came after Russia pulled out of a grain critical grain deal that allowed Ukrainian grain exports safe package, passage out of the country's Black Sea ports. The U.N. Secretary General, evil U.N. Secretary General, has warned that attacks on port cities will have an impact well beyond Ukraine when it comes to food prices. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP, Hour 2. the 
stand up strong, take the truth about themselves to understand what went wrong. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Uniting the races with truth. Instead of dividing them with lies, we're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show today. You can get involved by calling 888-77-53773. 888-77-JESSE. J-E-S-S-E. The biblical question for this week. My biblical question, what is your nature? What is your nature? Yours. Not somebody else's, but yours. Examine thyself. Know thyself. Examine thyself. We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com that show and don't forget you might be working out walking running lifting weights breakfast lunch or dinner hanging out at a beach somewhere in this world you can listen to the show on your iphone or ipad by calling the listen line at 641-793-1500-641-793 one five zero zero, and don't forget to follow us on rumble.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson, rumble.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson, and cozy.tv slash JLP, cozy.tv slash JLP. Follow, like, subscribe, ring the bell. Thank you all. It is Friday, it's get it off your chest day. It is whatever. Is on your mind. Express yourself, Friday. You Tom like a mug. You need to go to go to go to go and get yourself bleached because everything you say about black people and you're sitting up there looking like a tar baby. Uh, it might sound like a semantics argument, but he's a great alien. Ah! I wonder if he's been smoking pot. This is our biggest challenge yet. You ready, Miles? Oh yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, gang, gang. What is that? I have no idea. Yeah, challenging. In, indeed challenging. So what are we up against? Congratulations, Honey Bun. We are so proud of you and your accomplishments. <laughs> you. We need you to be kind and respectful. No. Stop her! Somebody stop there, her! There really has been enough Biden bashing, and the laptop <laughs> is old. We're not going to make it, are we? Mom... <laughs> I, I love you. you. Wait, I was, wait, 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 okay. wait, 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 okay. wait, wait, wait. Man up now, man up, nigga. I, I knew this was a bad idea. Wow. He should have hung up on her. Just hung up. What the? Uh, what a mess, huh? It's a spiritual battle, good versus evil. It's not physical at all. It's spiritual. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. By the way, the anchor baby put that together. Amazing work. I want to go quickly back to James, the first time I called out of Boston. And James is dealing with his child's mother and her boyfriend and their, their child. and It's a mess. It's a mess. Let's see your... Uh, Hey, hey, James. Hey, Jersey. Okay, so James, um, so you not only are you, it sounds like you're in court already, trying to deal with this animosity between you and your uh, girlfriend's ex-boyfriend with their child, right? 
Um, yeah, so um, there was a restraining order, or what's it called? Um, yeah, it's called like an abuse prevention. She basically, uh, the, 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 the ex tried to put a restraining order on me against her for their son, which is ridiculous. He made up a bunch of lies and all said all this stuff. That got thrown out. My lawyer destroyed him for that. And then, uh, so then he went after her for staying with me. So then she turned the tides on me because she got her son taken away. It's a mess. It's a mess. Now, I want to tell you something else, too, Jesse, I was thinking while I was on break. Um, uh, I wanted to mention, uh, you know, this girl, um, you know, she was she was abused as a child. And this is this is where, you know, I felt bad for her in the beginning. You know, she told me all the stuff that happened to her, and I'll spare you the details. It's not, it's not pretty. But, uh, you know... <laughs> Uh, so I, I really just felt bad for this girl and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, I shouldn't have and just should have saw it as red flags. So, you know, it's, uh, that's just life, I guess, you know. And now she turned on you. Exactly. And so what gave you the right or gave you the right to feel bad for her? Who are you? that you should feel bad for anyone? Uh, what gives me the right to feel bad? Uh, I, I, I have to say it's, um, just, it's in my nature, I guess. Um, and why don't you overcome that? Uh, you know, I, uh, and again, I think this is, um, this is like, uh, I think God, uh, this is a godsend because, uh, you know, I, have a, I, I think I have a lot to learn. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, I got myself in a mess, so. I, what, uh, why do you think you have a right to imp- to try to discipline someone else's son? Or, was it a boy or a girl? Boy. What would give you the right to try to discipline that man's son? When he didn't want you to and she didn't want you to, what give you the right to do that to someone, try to discipline someone else's child? Um, uh, I, I just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to answer that. I, I just, I felt obligated to, um, you know, I, I just got to the point where I, I couldn't take it anymore, you know. Uh, so You could have gone home. It wasn't your house. It wasn't your child. You, I'm staying home and, and have her bring your child to you. Let me ask, uh, now you got to go, you want to go to court to try to get visitation rights, right? Meet your child. Yes. Why don't you drop that and just uh, learn from learn from the situation, uh, get an understanding about the situation, so you don't repeat it, and just suffer your losses because you just dig in a deeper hole. Why not do that? Um. So that's what I was on the fence about. And and this lawyer was saying that you know she touched on that and said um you know if you don't go through with that have it on paper so to speak where I have a specific time where I can have my baby then I give up that right and uh, then she's in full control and she can dictate when I can see the baby so it kind of puts me in a tough spot um and, and she. That's what the lawyer had told me. The lawyer told you to go to court so you can have it on paper. You went to court. No, she she told um. You know, at first I wanted to do it, and then I and then I then I was going to cancel, and then she says, "Okay." And she sent us an email. She says, "Uh, if I give up, if I don't go through with it, um, 
she's like, just wanted to let me know that, you know, that I'll have, I give up my rights and, you know, the, the mother can dictate everything. She going to do that anyway. And, um, and why are you, you know what happens when you listen to a woman, right? Uh, yes, I do. And what happens when you listen to a woman? When a man listens to a woman, what happens? He's a beta. Right, he suffer. You should have a conversation with Adam about listening to Eve. Mm-hmm. You listen to the woman, she's a lawyer, and she's just thinking about money and all that. She already know you're not going to win anything. Mm-hmm. Why not just let the baby go, let the woman have the baby, and you start working on you? You think that's that's the uh do you think that's what I should do? That was a question. Um you you said that in the form of a question? Yeah. Why not why don't you, why why not give up the baby and just let the woman have the baby? Just walk away. Don't sign any lawyer paper saying you're walking away or anything. Just walk away. Why not do it that way? Because if you sign paper, you don't need to sign paper saying that I don't want any parental right. I give up everything. That's another setup. Why not? You make this baby out of wedlock with, with what you see it not to be a, a good woman. Why not just walk away? Because all you're doing is digging a deeper hole. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. No, that was a um, question. Why not just walk away? Well, uh, like I said uh, before, you know, it's, I, I'm having a problem with, uh, you know, it's a baby girl, you know. And? Um, um, <clears throat> well, what I, what I was um, t- touching on earlier about uh, her abuse, the, the mother, um, she was, uh, she was molested as a child by someone in their family. And everybody and their mama been molested. And that's not your problem. And that's her problem. Well, I know, I know. Well, but I don't, she told me this when we first dated and, and, uh, and you know why then, she told you that? I thought it was, I, I thought it was a cry for help. No, it was a, tr- uh, he told you that to draw you in and destroy you like she's done the man before you. That sounds about right. So that's I, I said that because um she won't tell me who the person is. It's not your business. I I understand that, but see the problem I have, Jesse, is uh, I don't, it could be a brother, could be someone. It's still you know, not your wants business. Bring, she wants to bring the baby around this person. How do I know? How can I protect my baby? Like, I, you can't can because you're not married to the woman, and she's not she's not in agreement with you. Right. Why are you so emotional? Your those emotions that you have are evil. And they're leading and keeping you right in hell and more hell and more hell. Why are you so emotional? Um, because you're not walking by the light. Up. You're walking by the darkness and you're so emotional. Why is that? Um, I guess I have a lot of work to do on myself. I don't know. Why are you so emotional? Are you black or white? White. You white? Uh, yep. Why are you so emotional? Uh, I don't know. So why would uh, you, instead of, and, and, and the question that I'm asking, I already know the answer to, but I want you to see for yourself. Why, instead of working on all this outer mess with these evil people, 
why not see what's work on you inwardly to see what's going on so you can overcome this stuff? Because look at it, everything you're doing is, and turn it out bad. It's just getting worse. It's not getting better. And you don't mm -hmm. seem to see that. And you're just digging more worseness, more bad stuff. You're making it worse for yourself. Why don't you see you're making it worse for yourself? And it's not the girl's fault or her boyfriend's fault or anyone else. But you're just making it bad for yourself. Why don't you see that? Um, I, uh... I'm definitely w trying to work on myself for sure. Um, you know, just uh, so um, you know, it's it's. It, I think it just takes time. You know, it's gonna take a little time. Kids, I'm I'm trying just to believe me. I I work six days a week, and I and I'll save all my money of trying to trying to make things work in my life. You know, I'm trying to get ahead. Um, get ahead all of I what? Do is work. Uh, financially. What, what does so that can, mean? Get ahead financially. I want to. Uh, I want to, uh, you know, have a nice house to like, rest in. You know what I'm saying? Um, but there is no such like thing that. as getting ahead financially. Either you finance, you have finance, or you don't. No such thing as getting ahead financially. That's a setup. Well, uh, I guess what I meant was like, you know, I eventually want to have my own house. Maybe yeah. like a rental where it help pay for itself and kind of set myself up where I can, I don't have to work as hard later in life. Here's what you I know. recommend. Um, do what you want, of course. You stand in your hell with this woman and that baby and her boyfriend and their baby. Or you walk away from it and work on you. You need to overcome your mother. All the emotional, the mental thinking and emotions that you're feeling, the up and down, that is the nature of a woman. That's your mother nature. And it's not hers, but it's the devil's nature that made a home in your mother. And she has traumatized you and recreated you her image. And now you're thinking and acting just like her. You need to, that, that's not logical for a man to think and act and be emotional. An emotional man is a weak man. An emotional man has the nature of a female, which is his mother. And that's why God said you must be born again of the father. So you can, he can take the mother's nature away from you and give you your father's nature, which is God's nature. Because all you're going to ever do is live a life of illusions that only causes you to de deeper holes for yourself because you're listening to the world and the world don't know anything. These experts and the people with degrees are as dumb as a doorknob. Um, why don't, I, I why, heard you... Yeah. No, go ahead. Um, I've heard you talk about this... Um, you know, a lot since in the last few weeks that I, and, uh, you know, I find that very interesting and, uh, I'm sure you've explained it many times before on the air, but, uh, can you, can you tell me how you figure this out? By getting to know yourself, watch what's going on inside of you, pay attention to you, know thyself and you will discover that you are emotional you're up and down, you feel good, you feel bad, you feel this, you feel that, and that you're going to see that all thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. And so you start to overcome the thoughts by the light of God separating you from them and keeping you in the present where all answers, life is eternal life right in the present. But you got to, uh, I recommend you do the silent prayer. Have you heard me say, go and forgive your mother? Yes, and uh, I, and I actually I did this past week. And how did what did um, you say to and, her? And my father too. Um, I told her. Uh, I said, um, "Mom, I hope." Uh, I said, "I forgive you for anything bad you might have done to me in in my life, and uh, I want you to know that I love you." So you didn't forgive her then, because you don't love her. You don't have love yet. You have 
you only have your mother's emotional love, which is hate. That's not love. So you tiptoed around mama. That's why you're not free. When you forgive her, then God is going to change your heart from that emotional crap, which is hate, to real love, which is a dispassionate love. It has no feelings. It's not up or down or anything. It just is. Mm -hmm. When you talk to your father about not by him not protecting you from your mother, what did he say? Um, I, I didn't touch on that. Why not? Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess I haven't figured it out yet. You... I you need to work on you, James. You need to let all this other stuff go to happening outside of you. It will destroy you. Right. You need to work on you so you can overcome all these false identities you have about yourself and life and, and these ideas and stuff. And just go to work and pay your bills and save some money, buy yourself some land or house as you want. Nothing wrong with that because you... That's to live on earth in a physical way. But you need to rise in consciousness. You cannot see right now. And that's why you're doing all this crazy stuff, because you can't see. Mm -hmm. You need to work on you, man, because you listen to this woman lawyer. She's setting you up. You listen to all these other emotional ideas setting you up. You just, you're really digging a hole, man. You need to wake up so you can see. So you can see, and once you can see, you got to be fine. Life will happen naturally, and it'll be amazing. Absolutely. Are you doing the silent prayer? Uh, yes, I am. Every morning, every night. Yeah, um, I have to. Uh you know, I'm not perfect. At it. Sometimes I forget, but I, uh, anytime I, I try to remind myself, I do. Are you doing it every morning, every night? Um, I have started this week, yeah. Are you doing it every morning, every night? Yes, sir. Well, stay with it. And watch those thoughts. And God going to bring you out of the thoughts, and you just watch them. And as you and, and because you have identified with them for so long, you think that they're real and you think that they are you, but they're not. And so just watch them and don't do anything that they tell you to do. The thoughts, right? Except practical thoughts on the lower level, like go to work, save your money, buy yourself a house when you can, pay your rent and all that kind of stuff. And and you'll be fine. Things it would be so perfect it's hard to put words to. But you can't right fix on. yourself. You can't make life happen. No one can. The more you try to make life happen, the worse things get. It's only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. And leave that man and his child alone and that woman alone. Let her have that baby. Drop. I mean, do what you want off car, right? I'm giving you the, the right advice, but it's up to, maybe, you know, some people love their hell. They love their misery. So you may love your misery. So if you love it, stay in it. Don't take this good advice if you love your misery. But I would recommend you drop it and, go, and, and, and just say, you know, don't even don't sign any paper saying you give up any rights to anything. And you just stop communicating with them and, and you'll be fine. So and do you recommend that I, uh, I don't try to get, um, you know, custody like on on paper. What makes you think that will work? Um. Well, if it's if it's like you know written on paper, she's gonna have to follow that. What makes you think she's gonna follow something written on paper? Uh, I know it pretty well. 
She ain't um, going to follow nothing written on paper. If she was going to follow something written on paper, she, you wouldn't have to need in the paper. She would automatically stay out of the way and not prevent you from seeing your child. If you trusted her, you you wouldn't need to get paper. You don't trust her. That's why you need to get it on paper. And this woman, if they got it on paper, she's going to dictate when you can see the child, how long you can see the child, when you got to bring the child back, if you can see the child. You can't have another woman, all kind of stuff. She's going to make your life pure right. hell. No, that's a good point. That makes a lot of sense. Why do you keep trusting her? Um, <laughs> good question. Any answer? Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. Because you can't see, James. You need to be able to see. You're living in your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And anyone that lives in their thoughts are worshiping the devil and they're living in darkness. Just think about that for a moment. If this woman was a decent woman and she had love, not love you, but had love, period, she w you wouldn't need in the paper to see your child. The fact that you got to get paper, it says you're dealing with the devil. And the devil doesn't care about paper. What's up? No, you're right about that. And you're about to a lot of sense. waste all your money that you need to be trying to buy a house with. Mm -hmm. How much money have you spent on that woman already? Too much. See there? She's making, you're weak, man. You have any, a woman's nature. You need to overcome your mama. Yeah. Why don't you work on that? I'm going to have to run. Any other question about this or anything you disagree with that I've said? Uh, no, I don't disagree. Um, any other questions? Um, not that I can think of, Jesse. I always, I want to thank you for your time, and uh, I really appreciate it. I really do. Um, and I'll, I'm going to take your advice. I will, um, I will highly recommend that you get over those emotions, man. Emotions are evil. And a man should mm -hmm. never be sensitive and emotional. And you can't change that on your own. You need to see that you're that way. Know that it comes from anger and realize that you become like your mother she couldn't help herself. Her mother did it to her. And go and, and, and don't do it until you see what she has done to you, how she imposed her will on you, and how even now she still control you. Uh, and forgive her for that so that God can take that spirit away from you and forgive your father and so that you can love him with the perfect love as well. And then life will start to unfold for you. But the way you're going, you're just digging a deeper hole financially and everything. Right. You need to, I, I recommend you work on you and let all that other crap go. Really. Yeah, well, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do that, Jesse. Thank you so much, man. Um, God bless and uh, I appreciate you. And then you walk, and those emotions that say, oh, how are you going to let your daughter go? A father's supposed to fight for the daughter. Those are lies. A man should be logical, not emotional. Not emotional. So don't pay attention to the lie, but it's all ego. It's not even about the daughter. It's about how you feel. It's not about the daughter either way from you or the mother. It's about how you feel or she feel. But James, I got to run, do those things, see how they work, and let me know how it goes, all right? I will. I'll call you back um, when I, when another time, Jesse. Thank you so much. You're welcome, buddy. Back in a moment. Now, I totally disagree with the way things are going, but you can't be angry.
because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to control you. They do things to make you mad so they can control you. It's like being married. And the wife would do things to make you mad or she would do things to make you feel good. And men do that to women too when they want something from the woman, especially sex. They'll make her feel good or they'll make her angry. And the woman's gonna have to say, you don't wanna be angry. You wanna speak up, you wanna disagree with what's going on, it's wrong, but do not be angry. Then you won't have fear, you won't have doubt, you won't have worries, you'll be able to see. But you gotta stay away from anger. That's why you must forgive your mothers and your fathers so that you can overcome the spirit of anger. It's a spirit and it's wicked. Nothing good in anger because it has no love, bro. You need love to defeat evil. And love is not a weakness. It's a strength. It's from God. It's his nature. Amazing. It's amazing that um, this time going by just like that, right? So quick announcements. At 9 a.m. this morning, the Hake report is coming up right after my show from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. And at 12 noon, a brand new episode of the Fallen State dot TV. Busy day today. The fallestate.tv. Amazing meeting last night with the latest form. Every first thir- third Thursday night. Every third Thursday night we have a meeting with the ladies. And um, it was amazing. And the first Thursday night for men only, Sunday morning for everybody and the mama. Um, the first Thursday night for men. Uh, what? An interesting discussion with uh, Kaylee Triller Harms. She is a woman's advocate, a contributor to the Federalist, a co founder of the Hands Across the Aisle Women, Women's Coalition. Watch this. Next time on The Fallen State. The only way that a woman can have a clear mind is by returning to her father. Do you actually believe what you're saying right now? I know it to be true. I hope you don't have a wife. This is the most misogynistic interview I've ever had. Why do you marry a man that can't take care of you? Don't insult my husband or we're going to be done talking. I would rather have a hole in my floor than a man who treats me the way that you treat women. Have you ever experienced toxic masculinity? Yes. (laughs) When? Today. Amazing. At 12 noon today, Pacific Time, and remember that you can uh, support the Fallen State by becoming a member on the YouTube channel there. And then for personalized shout-outs, whether weddings, congratulations, encouragement, birthdays, whatever it might be, go to Cameo. I do them myself. C-A-M-E-O. Dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. C-A-M-E-O, cameo, dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. At 4 o'clock today, the anchor baby, the American anchor baby, he's going to give you an amazing ride on an amazing flight. At 4 p.m., the American anchor baby. You don't want to miss it. Buckle up. And don't forget, if they're turbulent in the air, put on your seatbelt first and then the child's seatbelt. <laughs> what the? Put on your seatbelt first, right?
Don't worry about the mask. Just put on your seatbelt and then your child's seatbelt. At 4 p.m., you don't want to miss it. And to the Super Chats, donate and have your comments read out loud on jessaleepeterson.live and buy me a coffee.com. Buymeacoffee.com. One other quick announcement. The Sunday morning meetings this Sunday will be done by, will be Joel Friday TV is standing in for me at our Sunday morning fellowship this week, this coming Sunday. And if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise, I'll be back the following Sunday. And so all of next week, I think I'll be out. I won't even be doing the show. They're going to be guest hosting and replays and things like that all next week. I will not be here. All right. So it should be interesting. The crew is taking over. And that's what I want. I want someone else to take over when I can't do it. Get involved, men. What the? Overcome the fallen state. So this Sunday, I won't be here to do the Sunday fellowship. And all next week, I will not be here. All right, so they're going to do replays and guest hosts and an amazing lineup for you. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Okay. Whew. A lot. Let me go quickly to 12, 12 a first-time call out of Texas. 12, 12 work, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse Lee Peterson. How are you? I'm well. How are you? All is well. Happy White History Month. Happy White History Month. Thank you. I was the person that sent you that painting that you showed on yesterday. With the sweet potato painting? Yes. You were the, I, I thought it was a guy. I know. That's why I called today. <laughs> are you a guy or a female? I'm a female. I'm a woman. So you have a man's name? Yeah, I have a unique name. Uh, what's your first name? It's Devon Trail. Devon Trail. Oh, man. I thought it was a male. Thank you for that amazing painting. Very good work, by the way. You're welcome. That I is, want to say thank you for you, what you're doing. All the, you're welcome. Thank you for that amazing painting. I thought it was a guy because of the name. Yeah, I know. I get that a lot. Oh, so I was like, I asked my husband, I said, can I call him? He's like, yeah, just call him. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> so I called you today, and it's me. Well, I, I appreciate I'm glad you called it to clean that up, and I really do appreciate the painting. You do amazing work. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. And that picture of the sweet potato pie made me want to go out and buy a pie. <laughs> uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> 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 yeah, when I made it, I was like, he's probably going to want to eat the painting off this canvas. That's for sure. Wow, <laughs> thank you so much, Trail. Uh, I'm glad that you called to straighten that out. I do appreciate the painting. I don't take it for granted. It's beautiful. Okay, awesome. You're welcome. I have it in my office right now so I can see it every time I walk in and out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Thank you so much. That's all I call for. All right. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Bye. Bye now. Amazing. 888-7753-773. Art. It's a first time call out of Texas. Art. Welcome to the show. You're on the air. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I wanted to ask you about, you know, forgiving your parents. Right. Yes, sir. Is 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 that biblical? What does that mean? It, did it come from the Bible? About forgiving your parents? Yes. Before I respond to that, because it's an interesting question, does it need to be in the Bible before, before you know that you need to forgive your parents? No. Uh, so why did you ask if it's biblical? Because I, w- I wanted to know if it was biblical or is it just something... You just have to talk about it. But why do you need to know if it's in... So when you say it's a biblical, you mean is it written in the Bible, right? Right. Um, 
it is, is in the Bible. It is in it is in the Word. But let's say it wasn't in if it wasn't written at all in the Bible. Would you be, would you know that you need to forgive? Uh, you always need to forgive. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's, you're not asking that question because if it's not in the Bible, you're not going to forgive. You just want to know, is it in the Bible, right? Correct. Oh, yeah. Yes, there. Uh, uh, before you enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must go and forgive, and God will forgive you. Well, did, you, did your son forgive you? He did. He did. It, well, it, man, took, it, took, me- it took him a while, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, he finally, I think after he got married, I think that's when he really started to see what had happened with me, his mother, and his situation. Well, I was I was watching you. You was on IZM Radio one time. Was on what? And IZM Radio. Okay. Which, I, don't, I don't know what was, that is. He, he was interviewing you, okay, Tariq or whatever his name is. But anyway, they asked you, uh, how were you when you had your son? And you said 18. Well, I made him at 18, and he was born when I was 19. You know, I made him near the end of the year. Yes, sir. Well, uh, later on in the show, they asked you, how were your son? And you said your son was 40, and your grandson was 16. And then later on, at the end of the show, they asked you, how old were you? And you said you were 68. So 40 from 68 is 28. 18 from 68 is 50. So is your son, was your son 58 or was he 40? I have no idea what you're talking about, but um, uh, my, I was 18, 19 when my son was born. 19, I think I was 19. I just turned 19 when he was born. And, well, your uh, son should have been fifty. Okay. Uh, why you? At, why is all that important? I don't know what you're talking about at all. But why is that important to you? Well, look, look man, I was just want to ask you: Do you do uh, quality quality control on your shows? Do you go back and watch your shows? Why you is said? that? You didn't answer that question. Why is when my son or how old he is? Why is that important to you that you have to, even though you're wrong with the numbers, you add up all the numbers? Why is I'm that? I'm not wrong with the numbers. Why, from, why, is, you're not answering the question. why is that important to you when you can't even keep up with your own life? I'm, I'm keeping up my life. I'm no, just you, asking you a question. I promise you, you're not keeping up with your life. 40 from 68 is 28. Oh, good. Okay, would make are you been 28. Are you black? Yes, I'm black. No wonder you can't add up nothing. What the? 40 from, black 40 people, from 68. Black 40 people, from Jesse. Black people Jesse, don't know math. From, go back and... Black people that's don't why know you math. need to do a quality... Con, you contradict yourself all the time, sir. Like, okay. I'm going to give you another one real quick. I got to run. I can't play no more. I got to do super chat. Super, super. That's a waste of time. Super chat. Super chat. There's too many people on hold to be messing around with somebody trying to... Can't add that he black. <laughs> what the? Hey, let, let that man know black people can't add up nothing. And he acts like you would know how old your son is. Uh, no, I don't even know how old he is today. What the? <laughs> <laughs> what, is, you think you're a mama? <laughs> anyway. What the? Good morning, Super Chatters. Good morning, y'all. Morning. Good morning, Super Chatters. Morning. Oh, there's a line open, 888-7753-773. Okay. Amazing camel jockey. Gave a super chat yesterday on Rumble. Thank you. And he stated, God created the heavens and the earth in the beginning. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. Hake! So did God create a space ball, bail, ball, orbiting the sun? Question mark. No, it wasn't called bail. It was a ball. It was a ball. Ball earth. Obvious globe. <laughs> I'm answering them since so, it was addressed to me. Right. Yeah, I'm glad you did. So, is is he a flat earther or something? I don't know. I think he may be a. I think he may be a, an obvious globe denier. Meaning round, rounder. He, he thinks it's not round. Oh. I don't know if he thinks it's flat though. Oh, okay. I think. And so you answered the question for him. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, he uh, has a follow up super chat this morning on it. 
The Spirit of God was hover, hovering over the face of the water. God separated the earth from the waters and made it fruitful. God formed the sun, moon, and stars. And that's a continuation of yesterday's Super Chat. Okay. Nice. Thanks, Thank man. you. Yeah, appreciate it. Captures the imagination, just like space and ball earth does. Anyway, games were... <laughs> <laughs> we have to pl- trade jabs. Nice. With the Thank Super you. Chatters on the JLP show. I disavow. Games for Wreck with a diamond on D Live. That's a sure he says, I disavow. Oh, yeah, yeah. I do. Indeed. The hate report. I thought you were disavowing me fighting with the super chatters on your show. No, I was reading your shirt. Nice. Uh, get yours at the hate report uh, Teespring store. Games for nice. Wreck donated a diamond on D Live. We're so proud of you, honey bun. Kiki, 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 kiki. It just feels good. Kiki, 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 Ravender on Streamlabs. Jesse Lee Peterson not live. If you cannot see, you will show me. If you can see, you cannot show me. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Do you follow that? Because I don't follow that. Repeat it. If you cannot see, you will show me. If you can see, you cannot show me. Amazing. I mean, no, I don't quite understand it, but thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ravender. Yeah, thank you. If you can make it clear, I appreciate it, but I don't quite understand it. Star Sion bought a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. Buy me a coffee. Dot com slash JLP talk. Jesse, what do you think the purpose is for having kids nowadays? Some women get financial help from the government, <laughs> and the father... <laughs> And the father, of course. And they spend it on their nails and hair. That's who I see closest people that I know be doing, <laughs> she says. <laughs> Laughing with a little bit of sweat coming on the brow. Emoji. We should procreate, but it's like they don't even want to raise it, as in the child, together as a family nowadays. Kids are just for money-making government assistant, she says. Amazing. So the purpose of today of raising, that's it? Yeah. The purpose of today of raising kids is uh, so that the woman can bankroll the man, can rip him off, and destroy the child, and so that the men will have to work harder to pay their pay them more money, because now they got to pay child support, the woman support, and all that crap. It's uh, it's just for that for money. It's a money grab thing. That's it. No. Thank you, Sion. Nangiti Avian Koi on Streamlabs, Jesse Lee Peterson. Live. Hi, Jesse. Reading your book, The Antidote. And man, wow. How, spelled W A U W. How is not everyone reading this? The but, Antidote. Yeah. By reading this book, I understand how you can be and write honestly and justly without it being a smear campaign. Question, what do you mean with the alchemists? The alchemists in your book. Oh, in the the antidote. antidote. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know yet. You don't know I yet? forgot. <laughs> That's a good question. I'll check it out. So I, I haven't read in a while. It's been around for a minute, so I forgot. Indeed. But thank you. And by the way, the antidote, if you... Uh, you can go online and get it, rebuildingtheman.com, if you want an autograph copy, rebuildingtheman.com. And um, um, all my books are there, and I'll sign it to whomever you wanted to. Uh, the, um, uh, the antidote, Healing America from the... Poison, hate, of, of, hate bl- of hate, blaming, victimhood. Whatever. <laughs> and then the seven guarantee steps to spiritual, family, and financial success guy. And then the, uh, the um, scam, how the black leadership has flourished by like America. And uh, the last, the first book was, uh, that's the second. The from rage to responsibility, from rage to responsibility. Check them all out. All right, you can call eight hundred four one one bond, eight hundred four one one two six six three, and 
I will sign them. I do know that uh, it, the the that's what I call the race hustlers, right? In the antidote, and it's an it's a name for them because all they do is take advantage of the blacks and of America. And so I do know I call them that, but I forgot what I found that word. I forgot what it mean totally. But thank you. But it is a name for the race hustlers. Nice. Star Sion bought another coffee. Jesse, please have the guest I requested. I want to see how you would help the person overcome. Get on your producers, she says. But you read that the other day. No, this is an entirely new one. She keeps on doing that. She's doing the same thing over and over again? What the? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, mama. (laughs) <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Justin Childers. Thank you. I forgot that I was thinking that. Justin Childers, a breath of fresh air. This is on Streamlabs. Growing up, I was always told by women, especially mom, to smile and be emotional. Even as an adolescent, I didn't buy it. If it's natural for a male to be emotional, you wouldn't have to tell me to do it. And my dad ain't emotional, he says. Justin Childers. Oh, Nice. Men are not supposed, men, don't let anyone convince you that you're supposed to be emotional. That's a, it's a sad, it was like letting someone convince you that anger is good. It's just not true. Amazing, thank you. Uganda, not Wakanda, bought a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash JLP talk. Jesse, you need to see such and such movie in theaters now. I will. Thank you. Nice. Well, I don't know about will. I don't want to make that promise. But thank you. You know what he's talking about? The movie? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. J. Lou 714 bought five coffees saying, Buy me a coffee. Happy Friday to you, JLP and crew, and all the mindful chat crew. Thank you. Happy Friday to you as well. And thank you, guys. I do believe that is all for now. Amazing. Thank you all. I appreciate it. 888-7753-773. There's a line open. Let me go to... Uh, Hello? Jason out of New York. Oh, you can hear me. Can you hear me? No. Can you hear me? No. Yes, you can hear me. No, you I can can't. Yes, you can't. All right. I can't hey, hear so, you. Hey, so, how you doing, Jason? How you doing? How you uh, enjoying your White History Month? Happy White hey, History, you Jason. You enjoying your White History Month? You ha- enjoying, like, the white history that you enjoying, like, the white country that you had before, or, like, a backward slip of three off fingers? Are you enjoying watching White History Month? What'd you, you say? Like, What'd you say? I, you said what now? Are, are you enjoying like the evaporation of like the, I guess like the the white history that you knew, like how just going into like participation in like thin air, that whole world that you were so happy with boys and boys and men were and men. Like, oh, you know, you, and, and you ask, am I happy to see that white white history disappear? Yeah, I mean that white, no, not a white history, that white world that you had in your eyes that dream. So uh, you ask, am world. I happy that my country disappear? Yes, I'm, I'm happy to see that. No, I'm not. That's why I, I speak up for it every day because it is awful that the white men who founded and created the greater country uh, is allowed the no good people to destroy. Are you happy to see America being destroyed? Oh, of course. It's like y'all did that to the Indians, and we are doing it to you. So only and right. so, it's if it wasn't for right. white <laughs> America building the country, where would you be? I don't know. Like, if your guy was upset about it, he got sodomy the more he understood. He where floods and where all will that. you be? Thank you, Jason. I got to take a break. Another hour to go. Back in a moment. You can't run from evil within yourself or outside of self. You got to deal with it. And you need good in order to deal with evil. And God is good. You need to return to the Father. And you'll see within you, he will fight the battle for you. And he will fight it without because he will show you how to deal with it. And you will have no fear. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, along with nothing else. Nothing else means yourself, your children, your wife, your things, your ego, your reputation, and all that. You can't care about any of that. The children of anger will use it to control you. But if you love God, he will renew your mind, and none of those things will be before him. And so when they go after you, oh, well... 
You may take my body, you may take my things, but you're not going to take my soul. And that's a true reality. A whole lot of mess going on in the world. AI, the the liberals have made AI liberal, right? And vapes, also known by the mainstream media as e-cigarettes. Boring name, and they, but the young people are into it. And U.S. soldiers are going to the Middle East again, can you believe it? And Ron DeSantis, Ron DeSanctimonious, grandstanding against Bud Light, maybe? This is the end of hour two of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It is... Uh, Get it off your chest Friday, July 21st, 2023 AD. Stay tuned for hour three. Last hour of JLP is coming right up. But first, fake news, not fake news. Great women's forum last night, JLP said. And uh, today we have the Hake report right after JLP. And then after that, at noon Pacific time today, the fallen state. And then at 4 p.m., American Anchor Baby. Make sure you are subscribed to American Anchor Baby for Nick Stream, taken up in the airplane. So cool. And then, of course, church with Jesse Lee Peterson, but will be without Jesse Lee Peterson. It will be uh, Joelle Friday running the meeting. Fellowship with Joelle Friday TV. Check it out. Rebuildingtheman.com slash church. AI, Microsoft, Google, and other so-called leading AI companies, according to Kami Nonsense Network, committed today to put new artificial intelligence systems through outside testing before they are publicly released. So said the White House, the black on the inside White House. Why is the White House getting involved? The company is also committed to labeling clearly AI-generated content, which may lead to the widespread watermarking of AI-generated audio and visual content to combat fraud and so-called misinformation. These voluntary commitments agreed to by the Black on the Inside White House and seven major AI developers, including Amazon Meta, OpenAI, Anthropic, and Inflection, a bunch of liberals, for the most part, right? at least the ones you heard of, aim to govern the rapidly growing industry uh, for safety and security purposes. Oh, yes. So-called President Sleepy Joe Biden is expected to meet with top executives from all seven companies at the Black on the Inside White House today to discuss guardrails and potential legislation to regulate AI. And vapes, also known as e-cigarettes. Am I right or am I wrong? Over one in ten adults... Young adults in the United States regularly use e-cigarettes, according to a new report from the CDC. So reports is coming nonsense. While previous findings have shown that cigarette use has fallen to record lows, e-cigarettes have increased in popularity. From 2020 to 2022, e-cigarette j- sales jumped 22.7 million products Sold each month. More brands, particularly disposable e-cigarette products, entered the market while fruit and candy flavors that appeal to younger audience became more popular. The scared woman-led CDC, now run by another unchristian woman, I hear, arrives just, their report arrives just days after the American Heart Association released a statement warning that e-cigarettes carry risks for heart and lung disease. The only people who should be using e-cigarettes are people who are smoking cigarettes and trying to quit, so said Dr. Joanna Cohen, Cohen, director of the Institute for Global Tobacco Control at Johns Hopkins University. And U.S. soldiers deployed in the Middle East again. U.S. is deploying uh, 2,400, 2,400 Marines into the Middle East following recent Iranian attempts to seize commercial shipping vessels. The Pentagon announced that on Thursday. This comes after Iran, Iran, attempted to seize two U.S. tankers in the Gulf of Oman. Oh, man. Earlier this month, including one instance in which an Iranian vessel, or Iranian vessel, opened fire on a U.S. tanker. Wow. Bold. And DeSantis says, All options are on the table. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis suggesting his state's pension fund manager could consider legal action against Bud Light's foreign parent company. AB InBev, Anheuser-Busch InBev, SA slash NV, 
Belgian multinational company, which owns Budweiser, Corona, Stella, Bex, Who Garden, and many others. Sales of Bud Light have plummeted after they did that transgender mumbo-jumbo propaganda. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to this third hour of the show already. You can get involved by calling 888-7753-773. 888-77-JESSE. My biblical question this week. What is your nature? What is your nature? That's the biblical question. And we have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And don't forget, you're out and about, you're traveling, vacationing. July is why history month. Whatever may be going on, if you're not able to watch the show later, I mean, as it's happening, you can podcast. You can listen to the show by calling the listen line on your iPhone or iPad anywhere in the world. 641-793-1500. 641-793-1500. And don't forget to follow us on Cozy. Dot TV, cozy. Dot TV, and rumble. Dot com, rumble. Dot com, and I think we on cook or something. Hook, kick, kick. Check out kick as well, and like, ring the bell, subscribe, follow, and all that kind of stuff. You know, I was thinking of the black guys who've been calling the show today, and they are. Uh, happy that America is being destroyed. But if you notice, they have nothing to replace it with, nothing at all. But they're just happy America being destroyed. How can you live in a country such as this country, be happy that it's being destroyed, and, and have nothing to replace it with. Think about that. We're going to replace it with a George Floyd Afro pick a fro comb. What the? Nothing to... How can you be that ungrateful? Really, think about that. They are happy America being destroyed and have nothing to replace it with. And there was another guy that called, and he was trying to add up my son's birthday. I don't remember my son's birthday. What the? And the, and the last time I was on that show that he mentioned it was years ago. What the? It's crazy how the mind works, right? It's just insane. That's because the mind is insane. The mind is a terrible thing to save. You don't want to live by thinking. Everyone that lives by thinking is having a horrible life. You want to live by non-thinking. You want a clear mind. 
a clear, clear mind. Our battle is a spiritual battle. It's a warfare between good and evil. But it's up to you. Stay in your hell and suffer. Come out of your hell and live. People who believe thoughts and live in their imagination, they are literally living in hell on earth. This is hell for them on earth. Anyone that has anger, Anyone that has anger is living in hell. You're miserable. You have fear. You have doubt. Everything you do is wrong. One wrong thing leads to another wrong thing. You think that it leads to a right thing, but it leads to a wrong thing. You don't have to live in that hell. You can have paradise on earth. You got to get to know yourself. You heard, uh, I believe it was James, the first time I called out a Boston, I think. And I may be wrong about state, but all the decisions that's being made for him, because he's not making those, it's coming straight out of the imagination and emotions. It's hard for me to believe, though I do understand it. I got hair in my eye. What the? It's hard for me to believe that there's one human being on earth now that believes that anger is good. It, 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 it's just mind-blowing. Woe unto the man or the woman who call anger good. You're calling evil good. And you've allowed someone to convince you that anger is good. And then they tell that lie that Jesus was angry. So they use that lie to stay in their lie. Just think about it. If anger is good, why do you have fear inside? Why? If good wouldn't create fear, good would bring you peace. Anger doesn't bring you peace. Anger brings you fear all day long. You're in fear. You wake up in fear. Think about it. God does not give you a spirit of fear. And Jesus had no fear. The father's son did not have fear. His son had love. But do what you want. But everyone that has anger has fear. And fear is evil. And fear is of your daddy the devil. Remember I said that uh, over and over again that the worst thing that ever happened to the blacks other than abortion was the uh, civil rights movement? The worst. Yep, you hear it clear. Oh, I forgot. It's Friday. Thank you, Hassan. Get it off your chest. Whatever's on your mind, express yourself Friday. You Tom like a mug. You need to go to go to go to go and get yourself bleached because everything you say about black people and you're sitting up there looking like a tar baby. Uh, it might sound like a semantics argument, but he's a great alien. Ah! I wonder if he's been smoking pot. This is our biggest challenge yet. You ready, Miles? Oh yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, gang, gang. What is that? <laughs> I thought you made sense. I don't know what it is indeed either. Indeed challenge. So what are we up against? Congratulations, Honey Bun. We are so proud of you and your accomplishments. <laughs> you. We need you to be kind and respectful. No. Stop her! Somebody stop there, her! There really has been enough <laughs> Biden bashing, and the laptop <laughs> is old. We're not going to make it, are we? Mom... <laughs> I, I love you. you. Wait, I was... wait, 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 okay. wait, 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 okay. wait, wait. Man up now, man up, Nick. I, I knew this was a bad to... idea. Yeah, that was a bad idea to let mama take mama call. Have you noticed that every time your mama call, it's a bad idea? That's why she called because she want 
to make it a bad idea for you. And she get life. Oh, by the way, someone asked me, how do I get to White History Church? You go to whitehistorymonth.store. White History, we have all colors, all kind of, well, different colors. White History Month, that store. Check out all our merch, all right? But remember I told you that um, one of the worst things that ever happened to the blacks was the Civil Rights Movement? Other than abortion, it was the Civil Rights Movement? and that the blacks have never returned to normal since then? Remember I told you that? Amazing, huh? I got more proof of that. The so-called civil rights movement is about wealth redistribution. One American news is reported. The city of New York has consented to pay over $13 million in a settlement of a civil rights lawsuit on behalf of around 1,300 people who had police encounters in the summer of 2020. Watch this from ABC. Historic settlement. New York City agreeing to pay more than $13 million to settle a civil rights lawsuit brought on behalf of some 1,300 George Floyd protesters. They were arrested or beaten by police during racial injustice demonstrations during the summer of 2020. Yeah, plaintiffs just moments ago recall some of the trauma they say they experienced at the hands of the NYPD and they're hoping the settlement sends a clear message that police abuse will not be tolerated. Now lawyers with the National Lawyers Guild first filed the federal lawsuit uh, in early 2021. This was on behalf of the thousands of people who participated in protests across New York City following the death of George Floyd. The lawyers focus primarily on incidents that took place between May 28th and June 4th of 2020, accusing the NYPD of violating the rights of protesters and using unlawful police tactics. Those tactics, according to the lawyers, include improper baton strikes, use of pepper spray, use of force, improper arrests, and the use of a tactic called kettling. We're told that's when protesters are corralled into tight spaces before being arrested. Now, New York City has agreed to pay about $13.7 million to settle the class action suit. That means about 1,400 people who were arrested or subjected to force by the NYPD officers would each get nearly $10,000. Lawyers for the plaintiff said this would be the largest payout to protesters in history. We were kettled on a small and narrow block, and then once the curfew hit, mass arrest and violence happened. I was treated with much more care in my skin, even in that moment, than others around me who were being beaten by batons, who were being kicked while they were down and handcuffed. There was mass use of the zip tie handcuffs that led to lasting nerve damage for myself and others. <laughs> what the? Real injustice discrimination. you can destroy, and now they pay you for it. They pay you now for so-called racial injustice demonstrations. This is America, folks. It gone south. It's been turned upside down. The police is to blame for doing their job, and these people get money for it. Can you imagine that? Did you ever imagine that you would be seeing this happening in my country? Now do you see why we need to remember and not forget? We need, if ever we need it, why history month? We need it now. Racial injustice demonstrations. All these words they make up. They're just made up words with no meaning. If ever we needed you, Lord, we need you now. 
And you know that is white history, my right? And a little tribute to Ronald Reagan. Remember him? Where is he now? He did. But amazing president. Ronald Reagan. Back, according to NBC, in 1980, Ronald Reagan said, this country need a new administration with a renewed dedication to the dream of America. If ever we needed that, we need it now. May Ronald Reagan's soul rest in peace. President Reagan, so rest in peace. According to NBC, in 1980, Reagan said, the country need a new administration with a renewed de uh, dedication to the dream of America. An administration that would give that dream new life. If we ever need a new life, we need it now. And make America great again. And make America great again. The late, great Ronald Reagan's words, according to NBC. Amazing, huh? I thought Donald Trump was the first to come up with Make America Great Again. The Great White Hope. But yet, that's fine. Because if ever America needs a new life, it's now. Make the dream. Give that dream a new life. Why history month? No, but these people want racial justice discrimination. No such thing. And you know, um, this next soundbite I want to play for you, it's going to show you how white liberals really think or what they really think about blacks. It really is. Because they know how, not all, not all, not all, not all the blacks, but most, not all, but most, are really screwed up. And they know it. That's why they work daily so that the blacks don't see that they're screwed up. So Ronald Reagan said that, according to NBC, in 1980, Ronald Reagan said, this country need a new uh, administration with a renewed dedication to the dream of America, an administration that would give that dream new life and make America great again. And lo and behold, here's what Bill Clinton had to say about those words, make America great again, from... Um, NBC, Bill Clinton has suggested that the phrase is actually a racist dog whistle. Watch this compilation. It really bothers me that Hillary's opponent seems to be doing best among older people. They like that. Some of them do. Make America great again. I was raised to believe if you spend all your time trying to recapture yesterday, you blow today and you forfeit tomorrow. That message, we're, I'll give you... America great again is if you're a white southerner you know exactly what it means don't you <laughs> what it means is I give you the economy you had 50 years ago and I'll move you back up on the social totem pole and other people down and now you are being called upon every one of you to secure a better future for your children and your grandchildren and to make America great again economically educationally and socially. Are we going to pull together? Or are we going to go forward? That is the question. I, I believe that together we can make America great again. And with your help, your heart, your devotion, and your efforts, we can build a community of hope that will inspire the world. Isn't that amazing? He turned around and used the same words. Was that a, dog, a racist dog whistle? If it's good for the goose, it should be good for the gander. What a mess, huh? Liberal white people hate black people. They really do. And they don't want them to dare to be free. And they don't want any other 
white person or black person to tell them they can be free. And the blacks think that they love them. Amazing, huh? Just because it's white history month, we have had, other than the great white hope, another uh, 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 amazing white president. You just heard that those sorry speeches from Bill Clinton, right? And what we hear today, what a mess, huh? Remember when presidents used to talk like this? Watch this compilation. It's recorded that shortly after the Declaration of Independence was signed in Philadelphia, celebrations took place throughout the land, and many of the former colonists, they were just starting to call themselves Americans, set off cannons and marched in fife and drum parades. What a contrast with the sober scene that has taken place a short time earlier in Independence Hall. Fifty-six men came forward to sign the parchment. It was noted at the time that they pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honors. Each of those men knew the penalty for high treason to the crown. We must all hang together, Benjamin Franklin said, or assuredly we will all hang separately. Their courage created a nation built on a universal claim to human dignity, on the proposition that every man, woman, and child had a right to a future of freedom. As someone who spent many years making speeches, I've quoted many definitions of freedom, some very moving and eloquent. But I've always liked George Orwell's blunt and unadorned statement. He said, freedom is the right to say no. You've said no to the rules of the game or the regulations of the day. You've said no to the conventional wisdom, no to the merely adequate, no to the limits and limitations on yourselves and others. I have long been unable to understand the atheist in this world of so much beauty, and I've had an unholy desire to invite some atheists to a dinner and then serve the most fabulous gourmet dinner that has ever been concocted and after dinner ask them if they believed there was a cook. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Happy Why History Month. Another Why History Moment. Remember when men were men like that? That's gone now. Except for the great white hope, that is gone for the most part. Exception to the rule. I want my country back. May Ronald Reagan's soul rest in peace. May Ronald Reagan's soul rest in peace. And these black guys that are calling the show this morning, they are happy that the country has been destroyed and have nothing to offer it to replace it. Zero. Nothing better. Not only do they not have anything better to replace it with, they have nothing. They're just happy it's been destroyed. And you let them, white folks, you let them in your country. Oh, here is another Reagan. Another Reagan. You may not have heard of this Reagan? Oh, by the way, someone mentioned that movie, uh, Hate ran a, uh, ran a uh, super chat, and they were talking about a movie that Hate did. I mentioned they were talking about The Sound of Freedom. I have not seen that yet. I have heard about it, but I have not seen it as of yet. I hope to see it. Uh, I hope I can get some time to check it out. All right, so thank you for that, super chatter. Um... Here's another Reagan you may not have heard of. This is Brian Reagan with a nice joke to end off the week. Watch this from Human Humor Point. Watch this. <laughs> Amazing. A nice way to end 
of the week. A little laughter is good. Amazing. I want my country back. Unfortunate, it's not coming back. That's just reality. Mike out of San Antonio, Texas. Mike, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing this morning? All is well, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'll get to my point. Uh, ha- happy White well, History Month, Mike. Yeah, that, yeah, definitely, definitely. Happy White History Month to everybody. I'd like to comment one quick thing before we before I start on my 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 subject. Uh, people don't know this, but they can look it up. Ronald Reagan not only he saved the uh, computer industry in America. People don't know this. I do because I was just starting my career. The Japanese was dumping a bunch of uh, products as far as the software product in the state. Yes. And he put a tariff on them. They would have been able to do that. I don't know what they wrote their code in. I'm assuming it's Japanese, which is a hieroglyphic language. So they would have had control. You know, I don't know how you would even write an if statement using hieroglyphics, but yeah, he did that. It sounds like a little thing that there would be no Microsoft or all these other companies we're thinking about. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And you're right. I don't think most people know about that. That's for sure. I didn't know that. Yeah. Same thing Trump was doing with uh, China putting tariffs on them. Yeah. Wow. What a mess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for that, Michael. That's amazing. Yeah, people look it up. Don't believe me. That's right. You know, some knuckle knuckle here from San Antonio. Look it up. (laughs) That's right. Uh, I'm going to talk about my homeboys, the Wright brothers, who don't get any press from anybody. The uh, Wright you know, brothers. Uh, I'm from Dayton, Ohio. Right on. They, they invented the airplane. Mike, can okay. you hold for me? Sure. All right, hold on. And Sean going to talk to you about your phone, too, because they're coming in a little. We're not quite hearing you all the way. And the treasure chest is now open on D-Live. I'll be back in a moment. Short break. Short break. after a while that when these guys overcome their anger, they have amazing ideas about starting a business, but because they've been told that if you don't get a loan from the bank, or if you don't have a five-year plan, or if you don't do this, and it's just simply not true, it's the first step with faith, then all things are possible. So, But the most important thing is to return to the Father. That yearning that you have, that emptiness, that void, is not for more stuff. It's not for more friends. It is a return to the Father because there's no way you can return to God and be angry at your earthly father. So thank you all so, so much, right? People around the world donated to Bond at rebuildingtheman.com or they call 800-411-2663 and we're still committed to pointing the right way for men and women to return to the Father. Amazing. Amazing. 888-775-3773. So quick announcements. All right. 
I'm going to try to get to as many calls as possible. Um, number one, the Hake Report is coming up. H-A-K-E is coming up at the top of this hour. The Hake. The Hake. The guy with the good hair report at 9, from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. And then at 12 noon Pacific today, brand new episode of The Fallen State. A very, very mama mia, what is I see, senor? Conversation with Kaylee Triller Harms. She, she is a wom- women's advocate and contributor to the Federalist and co founder of the Hands Across the Isle Women's Coalition. Watch this. Next time on The Fallen State. The only way that a woman can have a clear mind is by returning to her father. Do you actually believe what you're saying right now? I know it to be true. I hope you don't have a wife. This is the most misogynistic interview I've ever had. Why do you marry a man that can't take care of you? Don't insult my husband or we're going to be done talking. I would rather have a hole in my floor than a man who treats me the way that you treat women. Have you ever experienced toxic masculinity? Yes. <laughs> when? Today. <laughs> <laughs> so at 12 noon Pacific time, the Fallen State TV, and uh, you can support the Fallen State by becoming a member on our YouTube channel there. And then at 4 p.m., the Anchor Baby, the American Anchor Baby show. Buck, buckle up, put your seat seat belt on first. Is it turbulent? And then put it on the child. The seatbelt. A ride with the ankle baby. You don't want to miss it. At 4 p.m. today, Pacific time. All right? And uh, Sunday morning, Joel Fry to TV will be doing, he black, he will be doing the Sunday morning fellowship. I will be away. I will be away, so I can't do it this Sunday. I'll be back for the following Sunday. But the American Anchor Baby is going to do it this Sunday. And all next week, we're going to do replay. I won't be here next week. So they're doing uh, guest host and all kind of nice things. You won't be disappointed. They are taking charge next week. All right. So go to rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Rebuildingtheman.com slash church. And... Uh, Uh, Sunday mornings, the meeting Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Doors open at 1030. If you're in the L.A. area, come on down. Uh, not, you can watch it on li- live by going to rebuildingdemand.com slash church at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern time. All right? That's amazing. And don't forget, you can support us by going to cash.app, cash.app, slash bond, J-L-P, slash dot app, slash cash.app, slash bond, J-L-P. Let me go quickly back to Mike, Mike out of San Antonio, Texas. And Mike is giving us a little white history about the Wright brothers. Hey, Mike. Thanks for holding. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I'll try to talk directly into the phone. That is much better, yeah. Not hear me. I apologize for that. Okay. I'm still out here in the woods. Uh, Yeah, the the interesting thing about them is their dad was a Baptist preacher, and he, you know, everybody said they were crazy, you know, with headlines that men could fly, they would have wings, you know, that kind of (laughs) stuff. Yeah. And he, he bought them a bicycle shop. In essence, I guess, to try to pun unintended to ground them, in a sense. They took the mechanic of how to make that bicycle and turned it into the mechanic of how to make a plane. And they actually not only invented the plane, they also invented the control within the plane that you see now. Wow. It's fabulous, fabulous man. And the interesting thing is their mom was, uh, like, really educated and was into carpentry and mechanics and all this and that. Yes. And she married their dad. She said all that aside. She's a college-educated woman. This is over 100 years ago. That was a big thing. I don't know the specifics. It sounds like she poured all of that into those boys, you know, 
because she's a stay-at-home mom, and maybe that's what the way women should do it, the way they don't do it now. Yep, 100%, man. Yeah. That is amazing. A little history of the Wright Brothers. And one last thing, I know you've heard of Paul Lunch Dunbar. He was in the same era as the Wright Brothers. Oh, yes. And, in fact, was, was friends with them. And did you notice all of these different high schools named after him? I know you got one in probably L.A. There's one in D.C. There's one in Baltimore. I don't know if you ever read any of his writing. I have not. You shouldn't unless you want your IQ to drop. I mean, this <laughs> stuff is right there. It's right down there with cat in a hat and just moronic. And I they give this man one of the reasons probably because he's black. All of this press and I from the same city, the same time frame, you don't see any food named after the right brother. You don't even see any yeah. airports named after them other than my hometown of Dayton. Amazing. It's I've never even read Yeah. Go ahead. I've never even read any big autobiographies on these men. They just like, they invented to one of the, I think more important, or not, maybe not more important, but just as important as the, uh, the car. You know, and all the space travel, all of these satellites, all directly relate back to them. And they just like lost in history. You got a little bit of them in my hometown, and that's it. And you got this guy who they were friends with who wrote some of the silliest poetry. I mean, his poetry makes, you know, my Angelo. Oh, yeah. Lord, she did. Yeah. It makes her poetry seem intelligent and relevant. <laughs> That's how bad. That's well, how you bad didn't know that bad, was. then. What the? <laughs> Ooh, wow. but, I'm just being, but I was, I was just going to give my, and I am a black man, so I'm not. You black? I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it is. It, to fight for those other two that call. But, yeah, I just give, give the right brothers to my homeboys their pride. That's right, man. What do you think about those uh, couple of black guys called this morning and they are happy that the country has been destroyed? Uh, Brother Jesse, they've never been out of the country and they haven't interacted with any people uh, from other cultures. They don't have no idea idea of the world, I don't think, because the world, 90, 99% of the time is ruled by dictators, and you don't have no freedom. Yeah. Yeah. They, they have no idea. They have no idea. What a mess. And, 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 and they've been taught that. And, I mean, yeah, they've been taught that, and they want to believe it because they, they, they want to believe that if they went back to Africa, some kind of way things would all turn out better when the Africans are trying to come here. Um, that's right, man. What? Uh, and, it's, and, and the sad thing about it, too, is that the ungratefulness of it, they have nothing better to replace it with. They have nothing to offer, nothing better, but they're happy that the greatest country God has ever given us, they are happy of being destroyed. It's just, it's, it's just mind-blowing knowing that a human heart can be so wicked. It, it's jealousy. There's yeah. a lot of jealousy yeah. because, unfortunately, they talk about where the white man came and what he destroyed. Look at the places he didn't go. Yeah, Look at some of those African countries he didn't develop. You got a grown man running around with a diaper and a bone in his nose. <laughs> okay? <laughs> what the? Amazing. Well, Mike, <laughs> All uh, right. I appreciate that white history moment, man. Thank you for that. All right. And it's good to hear from you. All right, you take care. Tell everybody say hello. I will. Amazing. Okay. Bye now. All right. Bye. Amazing. Why history? Uh, 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 we can't forget, folks. We must remember. What good is it going to do us to have an a empty shell called George Floyd's statue? Think about that. What a sad way to live. Eli is out of Canada. Eli, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Hey, Eli. What's up? What's up, Jesse? All is well. How are you? By the way, thank you. Uh, I started listening to you like uh, one and a half years ago. And, uh, you know, um, like I listen to 
to the other guys like in a manosphere, like uh, Kevin Samuels and all those those guys. But when I started listening to you, it was uh, um, it was like uh, something that I, I always knew. Yes. But like in a real Christian way, you know. Right. So I just liked it, and thank you. Like uh, I moved out of my parents' house uh, this year. I'm 27. It was about time. But um, yeah, forgive my parents and all those stuff. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you. You're welcome, man. Uh, Amazing. Yeah. By the way, my um, I I I usually give uh, super chats, and uh, my real name because I'm French Canadian. My real name is Elise Elise Aurélien. But you guys always messed up my name. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's always funny, you know. And, and, and but, what um, is what is the real name? Elise. Oh, okay. You hear that, Hake? Yeah, Hake knows it. Oh, he knows. Okay. He so, uh, said he said to say it one more time. Elise. Elise. You hear that, Hassan? Uh, let me hear you say it, Hassan. Elise. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Thank you, man. And happy White here my Stay with it. Stay on that straight and narrow path. You haven't seen anything yet. It gets better and better. Yeah, thank you. Happy white instrument. Yeah, I don't know if in Canada they would beat my ass up, but uh, but sorry about for the curse word. They would beat me up, maybe I don't know. But uh, <laughs> happy white history month. Happy white history. I'll try to wait here though. Right on. Happy okay. white history month. Thank you. You too. All right. Is that that's a sad commentary? You can celebrate everything it would make no sense anyway, but white history month. You're concerned that somebody might beat you up. And, and it's all over the same. Everywhere I go, that's what people say. They're afraid that somebody get mad at them about celebrating white history month. So they're afraid to even say it. But everything else, no problem. Randy is a first time caller out of Minnesota. Randy, happy white history yeah. month and welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? All this well. Happy White History Month. Thank you. You're welcome. I have something that I think you should do. Okay. All of your T-shirts for the Happy White uh, White History Month. Yes. You should try to get a bunch of them and put them in all the stores, like Target or Walmart. And you need to patent that, too. Make sure your name is on there. We're working on all that. That's a good idea, Randy. Yeah, because that's the best way to get them out. And if you can, I know it's hard to do, but if you can, get, give a bunch of them away for free. You know what I mean? I do. To promote yourself. Amazing. Have you said what happy white history to anyone? Uh, no, I haven't. I never really thought about it. I'm not really into, you know, I don't put people in boxes or anything, but what you got going on, I get it, you know? And, like, even... Like Trump, I get where Trump is at with what he's doing, but I don't really want to put him in any kind of a box either. Are you? Are you, you know what I mean? Are you going to vote for him? I'm not sure. I don't really. I'm not sure who I'm going to vote for. Do you vote? Yeah, I, I vote usually. Oh, okay. And I, yeah. I'm basically a Republican. I have. Um, I grew up a Republican. Right on, man. Well, I appreciate that, Randy. And because of time, I got to run. But thank you, buddy. And we are working on that. Kaya is out of North Carolina. Kaya, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse. How are you? All is well. Happy White History Month. Happy White History Month. Amazing. Amazing. I was calling uh, to answer the biblical question. Kaya, did you live in Texas at one time? Yes, Jesse. And then you moved to North Carolina? Correct. Uh, when I first started listening to you and when I first started calling, right. I was in Texas. And uh, when we I, met in Florida, right. um, I was the girl at church with the American flag shirt who no, called I drunk. No, I totally remember it. Just that. <laughs> yeah. I, know I'm, I'm, I know I'm black and slow, right? But I didn't think I was that black and slow. But I Well, you I must be if you're just now putting it together. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm like, what the? Yeah, I moved out here uh, in December. You like it out right, there? Right after. You know, I do like it. It's very beautiful. 
um, it's very, it feels like you're in a forest everywhere you go. And I really like that. And I've always been a city girl. I've never lived anywhere where it was as country as it is here. Right. Um, the only thing that I don't, well, I realize I have an opinion about it, but I notice how here in this part of the States, um, it is very liberal and people are very quiet about what is right. And so yeah. the blacks are out of control. Uh, you see a lot of trashy white people here, just things I haven't really encountered before. Right. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not really affecting my life. I nice. just see it. And so you yeah. like it better than Texas? There's that sigh, right? So you don't yeah. have to lie. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know if I like it better. I definitely uh. like the climate better, and I definitely like um, my surroundings better. But I don't, I don't really understand the people quite yet. Oh, okay. Or I guess, I guess, yeah. Like I, I have an opinion still, so I don't. I do miss that that righteous kind of conservative um, environment that you that I have more in Texas, right? Amazing. So, you know, I, I just see a lot of ghetto blacks out here, and I just want to change the channel. <laughs> you're like, what the? But because yeah, of time, like, I know you want to yes, of course. You want to get to the biblical question. What is your nature? Um, My nature is wicked. And it's, it's I've, I've been in the dark for so long that I still identify with that nature of just, self-serving wickedness. Um, but then I also can see it and I know, I know it's not me, but it's still my go-to response or my go-to vision of myself is that wickedness. Now that I can see that that's what it is. So I hate to say it out loud or even to realize it because it's like I'm owning it and I'm accepting it. But I truly can see how my true nature is is just wicked. Amazing, that yeah, is so well. <laughs> deep. I can hardly stand it. But and I, but and I'm and I would love to do some follow up on that. But I gotta wait. But that is amazing. I do want to nice. say that it's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's a mess. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I am glad you see that though. Really, I do want to say that so that you know. You, I'm glad you see it. And I had a question. I'm going to ask you real fast. Okay. Um, so I, I've heard you say a million times, don't argue with the devil. Right. And it's enough to just see it. Right. But lately I've been wondering what exactly, like how, what does it look like to argue with the devil within? Is that just talking back to the thought or is that the moment you replay the thought because of what you thought about? Like, how do you know if you're arguing with the devil within Versus just looking at it. When you believe them, when you act uh-huh. upon the thoughts, when you believe the thoughts, when you act upon them, when you uh, 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 talk back to yourself, with even within your thoughts about what the thoughts are telling you, you're arguing right. with the devil. When the devil tries to tell you one thing and then you're trying to say no to that, blah, blah, blah. It's enough to just have no communication with it and just watch it. That's all. That is so deep, and I know it's true, but, man, sometimes I I just, sometimes I don't see it. So, I, you know, I, I know it's, I'm on the right path, but some yes. days I'm just like, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but even when you Lord miss it because me. you have identified with it, just know, wow, I missed that one. And then come back to it. But don't judge yourself when you don't see it. But when you do yeah. see it, you're going to be fine, and then you start seeing it more and more and more and more. It's and, a mess, and it's amazing, and I'm grateful yeah, to see it, but, yeah. yeah. Stay with it. Amazing. That's right. I appreciate right, your call. Happy White History Month. I got to run. All right. I wish you all. Take care. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye now. Super Chat. Super Chat. Super, super. Super Chats. 888-77-JESSE. I'll get back to the phone here in a minute. I want to get to some Super Chats here. Super, super. Yes, sir. All right. We have on D Live from Nordic Prince with a diamond. God bless you, JLP, brother. Thank you. You too. I appreciate it. Amazing. Uh, also from Nordic Prince on D Live. Amazing. 
Come on, them Duke boys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Amazing. God Shave says, Jesse, thank you. I'm growing a beard now. Nice. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Nordic Prince says, the chosen types want us to hate. Yep. Terrible. Amazing. Thank you. Not chosen by God. Uh, Star, sure. Star Sion bought a coffee. Oh, no, Jesse. I don't want to be a nagging B-word mama. <laughs> I'm just asking, please. And then <laughs> praying hands emoji. Well, I'm going to take a look at that myself because my producer gave it to me. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what, what all the excitement is about. Thank you, Sia. Nordic Prince with a diamond on D-Live. Is, is, news, is the news still going, brother? I don't know what you mean, man. <laughs> <laughs> what is he referring to? I don't know. Oh, okay. he, maybe wrong channel, but thank you, Nordic Prince. Normally, he, he does support us, though. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, guys. I do believe that that... Oh, hold on. Oh, amazing camel jockey. Hey, is your favorite movie Dodgeball? Never seen it. Because you always be dodging when I bring up the ball earth. The, clearly a ball earth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Jesse, this has been an amazing week on the show. I wish you well on your trip. Will there be a show next week? There will be a show replay, right? Replays and things like that. Yeah, we'll do replays. Replays, but also guest hosts. Yeah, guest hosting. We'll we'll do some uh, throwback clips and maybe take your calls if you like to call in to Hake and Hassan and Nicolas. So hey, Joel it'll be fun. amazing. Joel's gonna be guest hosting along with us. Oh no, no, I he'll mean be his show. He'll do his show. Right. Well, he's gonna have a guest host next Tuesday. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he won't even be here. Right. Amazing. <laughs> and uh, now right, I think. Doc. I think that's all for now, guys. Thank you all. I do appreciate it. The Hake Report is coming up at the top of this hour. Amazing. I was trying to get you some more calls, but I just can't. You hear the music. Callers, I wanted to get to you. The music's here. Become your own man. Become your own woman. Stay on that straight and narrow, all right? Do the silent prayer. Do not be afraid to stand alone. Because whatever you stand with the crowd is a mess. You will never be free, all right? And you'll be able to deal with people the right way, really. So www.silentprayer.video, www.silentprayer.video. Be sure to do it and stay with it. Happy White History Month. This Sunday, I will not be there once again and out all next week. But Joel Friday TV will be get, will be doing the Sunday morning service for me, all right? The Hate Report coming up right now. And then at 12 noon, brand new episode of the FallenState.tv. And at 4 p.m., the American Anchor Baby. It's been an amazing week. Thank you all for your super chats and everything. And get your shirts. Go to whitehistorymont.store. Whitehistorymont.store. Have a good one, folks. And uh, Pete, I wanted to get to you, Pete, out of Alaska. And the callers that are hanging up, I am just out of time. Have a good week. Oh, it's right if we give our plans up. I know we can have faith in the unseen. While we stand up and get back to the way we were designed to be. track one time. Joel Friday here. Look, stand up, stand up. We got fighting to do. We gotta show him who boss. He put a Viking in you. He put that lightning in you. Igniting the truth. But you beg and blame and lie and hate and never want to stand for the truth. So what you planning to do? You understand in the mood. You better go talk to your mama. Better stop at the trauma. Better drop all the trauma. Boy, you better stand up and up. Put your hand up and hut, huh. cause if we don't then we lose, and then we gotta hit the fake news, whoa.
So here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer, and I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it, and then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. So I asked the question, are you better than a child molester? I've discovered over the 30 years of counseling, the one thing that's missing, the one thing that's missing, and I think because it's not taught in the homes or talked about, we don't have examples of it, right? Is love. Our theme this year is to bring back Christianity to love God with all our heart, soul, and might, our neighbor as ourselves, and uh, to endure. And there, when you're in a fallen state, people will judge the molester but think they're better than the molester. And I ask, well, why do you think you're better? What I realize, it doesn't matter what you think about yourself or how much you have or don't have or how you accomplish things in life or don't. If you have no love, you have nothing. 